television coverage? Forget this panel. Who cares about this? I want to see a shot of the Undertaker from the Underworld. <laughs> Can I see it? A <laughs> Dogger Games! There it is! We're in the middle of the Hunger Games! <laughs> Reporting for duty. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a good thing he's not on an Hunger And I mean duty spelled D O O D Y. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Brian. Um, look, we got a lot to do in this hour. We're gonna, I'm going to tell you about the protests that we're doing. Uh, we got a lot to do. It's so we, made up. Like we are literally vamping until polls close. <laughs> but we're no, framing it. We got no, a lot to do. And graphics. No, and are you kidding me? I, there's so many great stories in, in this so-called real show, like three o'clock to five o'clock. When we not real, regular show, our regular time, right? Uh, I have so many stories. I don't think we're going to get through them. Uh, there was this story today. I'm just going to do it right now. Don't right? spoil it. Okay. Trump said uh, that he loves his kids, uh, you know, Ivanka, Donald Jr., Eric, and Tiffany to a lesser extent. No, he didn't. He said it. Did he really I say swear it? to God, he said it. No, okay. No, you say he said one of them he loves to a lesser extent. Tune in at three to find out which. I'm gonna leave you in suspense. Okay. Is Tiffany the daughter of Marla Mix? Yes. yes, that's right. And she's Tiffany is the one who did not kiss him at the yes. convention. Yes, that's right. That well, that explains everything. But she at the debate. At there the is debate. strife right. there. Yeah. And where has Marla Maples been throughout this entire campaign? Yeah. Another good question. Uh, maybe she's been on an hunger strike. She has been sworn to that. She's she's abiding by her non-disclosure, non-compete, non <laughs> non can't talk and cannot okay, so comment. I, that would be agreement. hilarious if there was a non-compete in a marriage document. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, really, no, really. If we get divorced, you cannot marry any other megalomaniac, <laughs> fake billionaire real estate developer in New York. Okay, just for the record, he said it in the context of the work they've done on the campaign. I'm very proud because Don and Eric and Ivanka, and you know, to a lesser extent, because she just got out of school, out of college. But uh, Tiffany is also oh, a to a lesser extent. Thanks yeah. for keeping him honest, wow. yeah. Ben. Yeah. Yeah. So have, once again, it's so 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 inartful ability <laughs> yeah, to true. express himself. <laughs> okay, I read things really quickly in the one-hour break that I had. Okay, all right, get off my ass. Uh, so um, now Brian's going to do this awesome thing just for the members, which is amazing. In a little bit, uh, tytnetwork.com/join. Like these nightmare scenarios, him and I do Rodriguez, it's an awesome combo. Maybe we should do a show like that. <gasps> okay. Uh, but so, but b before you go do that, I, uh, give me first, like, and in this hour, we're going to do Senate races and how things are going. Is Rice Feingold going to win? Uh, I'm in a heart attack over that. Okay. Uh, w like this election, insanity. Uh, give me your general thoughts on it first. I think that the word is, uh, and this word has been applied to just about every segment of our culture this year, disruption. Disruption, disruption, disruption. Disruption of the political process, disruption of the journalistic process, disruption of the religious. The re everything has been disrupted. Whether Trump had any foresight into that, I doubt it. But I just think we are in a revolution that is going on in each segment of our culture. And technology is driving it. Um, the media is, everyone needs to redefine their paradigm. And I just don't know what Wednesday is, is going to end. I think it's the beginning of something much bigger than any of us really thinks. Is the, there's no real return to a status quo. God, I love that. That I think that is a thousand percent right. And I, but the only problem is, Brian, you're going to get me to stop saying people don't get it because I think people are increasingly getting it now. I know you're part of us and Rebel Headquarters and Strong, but I remember the days when Strong Progressives didn't often get it, right? But I really think that we're in the middle of a disruption, the likes of which we haven't seen before. So uh, you know, we already had the Golden Dawn in Greece, which is right wing, but we also had uh, the the uh, I think Golden Dawn was Die Hard. <laughs> no, it was uh, <laughs> it really? no, it was Die Harder. No. Golden Dawn. It was uh, Red Dawn. It was okay. Red Dawn. Oh, yeah, I see. Um, and then we had the the far left party, which actually took power in Greece. We've had the far right parties take power in Eastern Europe. Everybody's saying, and we've and been some talking about close. it. Yeah, we've been talking about it here for the whole week. Throw a brick through the establishment window. We don't care what happens. Then, of course, I think the shot heard across the world was Brexit. And, and so there was worries that this election was going to be our Brexit, uh, maybe a Trexit. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a studio audience I don't know about? <laughs> Did you trademark that? Yeah, yeah. Is there a little R with a circle around it or a TM or something? Um, Trexit. No, let me pull a Jeb Bush here. 
Please slap. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, but I think that Brian's a thousand percent right. It's it's not just Trump. It's of course Bernie Sanders. More importantly, Bernie Sanders. That and people keep saying like, well, Hillary Clinton got more votes in the primary, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. There's no real, uh, you know, uprising here. No, no, look, she did. I understand that. I thought what they they closed too many polling stations or Rhode Island, Arizona. We talked about that earlier, but she got more votes. I understand. Well, that's not the argument. The argument is a guy who almost no one in America knew outside of people who cared deeply about politics, uh, who was the most liberal senator who calls himself a socialist, rose up from almost nothing in the polls and closed a 60 point lead on a woman who has the biggest name recognition I've ever seen in politics uh, and the entire Democratic Party establishment behind her. If a guy like and that unlimited money. And if a guy like that can close the lead and get 46 percent of the vote and then Trump beats 16 other Republicans. Meanwhile, and, and Brian's right again to, on, a, on the broader point. It's not just politics. Look at what we're doing here, right? Right now, I, we talked earlier about how let's beat TV today, right? Let's get uh, bigger people, uh, more people watching us. And, but and you got to understand something. Yes, tonight we probably will not pass CNN in concurrent live viewers, right? But we will. We've already passed at least a quarter of the cable stations. So like that in the old days, at an online stream. Being larger than a cable show, inconceivable, mm -hmm. unheard of, no way. If I showed you the graphs that I see business-wise, what's happening to TV? The the so above 65-year-olds are actually watching TV a little bit more, like two percent more. Everything else is below the the line, below zero. And for 18 to 24-year-olds, the the graph goes like this: boom, mm -hmm. right? They lost 40 percent of their 18 to 24-year-old audience. In one year, ESPN just had its worst month ever for mm -hmm. subscriber loss, and there's no reason to think that next month won't be as bad. Yeah, and I think we can lay the blame squarely on Colin Kaepernick <laughs> <laughs> on his knees. John and I to roll it with a relevant sports <laughs> reference. The pronunciation was right. Everything was great. You know, he plays soccer. Well done. Okay. <laughs> um, real quick, though. Real quick. So going back to politics being disrupted, in the last hour we had Nomiki Konst on the show who is a political analyst and she made a really good point about the DNC specifically and how the way the DNC operated during this election and the consequences that they paid as a result of that I think is going to shake things up for them moving forward. There are certain things that they are not going to get away with doing in the future, right? So yeah, that's exactly right. And so that's why before Brian leaves, I wanted to ask you that we'll the, the that next part of that question, right? So we can go on and on about all the disruption in the different you know uh, arenas, but in, when it comes to politics, let's assume for a second here that Hillary Clinton, as the polling indicates, will win tonight. And I, I'm less certain of that than everyone else. And you know the results start coming in at six o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Eastern, and then the big ones eight o'clock. We're going to cover that here for you. But let's assume Hillary Clinton wins, right? Uh, and uh, and after the the election is called, we're going to have a lot of progressives on here. Uh, you know, P Adam Green, uh, Robert Shear, um, Oliver Stone wanted to join us. He sent me wow, an apology great. note that he he couldn't join you guys because he's in South America right now. He said, "What a depressing election!" But I can't wait to be with you guys in the next election. Uh, Julian Assange might join us later. Okay, so all those progressives. I want to ask you, Brian. What do you think happens next if Hillary Clinton wins? Is like, do we just get, like you're saying? We're not going to go back to the normal. We're not going to go back to status quo. So, what do you think happens? I think she serves one term, and I think that, as you intimated earlier, I think we ironically are right back at Bernie Sanders. We come back to these same themes that are never really going to go away. I think they're here forever. This idea of an economy that benefits the most people uh, at the same time. I think we're going to have to somehow make those ideas thrive with the right person mm -hmm. who is in office. It may be mismatched at this moment, but I think she'll serve one term. I think that the, the, the field is wide open now for someone to come in and take those ideas that even even Bernie Sanders ideas and turn them into a right wing cause the idea of because that's what we've seen this topsy turvy flip flopping of political beliefs and value systems and allegiances are all kind of mixed up now in this giant potpourri of crap and I think the field is wide open in four years and someone could sweep in and um, so you and mean she'll lose to a Republican or she'll 
which you won't even run again or challenged? I mean, do you th obviously you don't know, but I mean, I, what, what, I think like that in the, your head, what's that? In my head, the right Republican can beat her in four mm -hmm. years. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I think That's makes my, it really interesting is obviously whenever someone comes in and as you say, disrupts things, we wonder, is this emblematic of a trend? Is this repeatable? And I definitely think that there could be another Bernie Sanders. I, I mean, I've said many times that it sucks that we have this once-in-a-lifetime possible candidate Bernie Sanders going against a once-in-a-lifetime representative of the Democratic establishment that the Democrats don't typically have. They don't typically have one candidate that everybody knows is likely to become the candidate. It's usually a more diverse field. And so it took the most supported establishment Democrat to yeah. fight off that's Bernie Sanders. That's a very interesting way mm -hmm. of looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. But... For four years from now and eight years from now, there isn't another Hillary Clinton waiting in the wings. There isn't another obvious Bernie Sanders waiting in the wings, other than possibly Elizabeth Warren. And I don't think she's as like Bernie as some people think. There's also not another Donald Trump waiting in the wings. I mean, there could be, but there are no obvious ones that we can point to and say, oh, in four years it'll be them. And all three of those people that I've mentioned are old people, and they won't necessarily be around in four or eight years. I, 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 in the I, same I will, way. I just want to give this quick coda is that. I see the one, the, the journalism and electronic media will never, ever remedy itself, which gives w much more value and places way more importance on what you are doing in here every day. Because I believe that train will never, ever slow down. It's only speeding up. Politics is driven by self-interest. News is driven by money. Mm -hmm. Or both are driven by self-interest and money. They're never ever going to return to a to a more traditional um, um, journalism. Will never get back to its roots purity. in reporting and uh, purity. Thank you. Um, I, so this right here will be crucial, critical. You will only grow. Well, look, we will be in four years. My God, you'll be so important to the process. Um, we don't know what the truth is anymore. We are so fractured. We don't know where to look. All of the fake news sites, all of the, uh, all the groups that are creating news stories in our news streams that all look like they're the same and everyone is basically choosing whatever truth they want to forge their identity. It will be critical that groups are, that, that like the Young Turks just continue to forge ahead. And um, yeah, I think, I, think, I think we're in real trouble. I yeah. really do. I think we're in a new age. And Wednesday will be, nothing is, there's no resting on Wednesday, no matter what happens. I just think that we, it's incumbent upon media, someone in media, to keep just searching, digging, investigating, and now uh, analyzing, doing the real work that journalism has, has stopped doing. So I, I agree with you so thoroughly anyway. that I'm only going to add one small thing to it. I, I really think that... Uh, that you're so right about the status quo is over. We're done with that. And I know that the establishment won't see it that way. And if Hillary Clinton prevails, they're going to want to go back to the good old days. Well, okay, we're back to sanity. Now let's get another Bush in here and we'll go back to the same old games we've been playing. And they're not going to be able to. But I give that, and I think Hillary Clinton will get primaried from the left. And I think that, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I actually believe that an Elizabeth Warren type of person, not necessarily her, but someone like her, or maybe her, uh, will come up and, and beat Hillary Clinton in the primaries because I think people are so tired of the establishment they're gonna if if I don't, if they do today they're gonna hang on by their fingernails and then and then that's it but the reason why that's so important is because if you don't do that it leaves the populist field to just the right wing mm -hmm. and that's a terrible idea because mm -hmm. populism is gonna win mm -hmm. and it's so it should be the one from the left not from the right. And, and to your point, Brian, Charles Grothammer today talking on Fox News about how there's a civil war within the Republican Party because are they going to go back to what conservatism meant? But, you know, it was always a mirage. The voters actually never cared about, hey, let's do more trade deals. They, they never signed on to that. The Republican voters didn't do that, right? It's just what they were spoon fed by the establishment who gets paid by the same, you know, multinational corporate interests, et cetera, whether it's in terms of advertising or it's in terms of campaign donations. All these assumptions about what a Republican meant, and Trump, you know, turned that upside down. So there, so what is the Republican Party after Trump after today? No one knows. It's because it was a mirage in the first place. So once you break the status quo, there's a lot of things that are going to come out of that, and some are going to be great, right? Because we need that system broken, and some of them are going to be perilous. Yeah. So buckle up, everybody, for what's coming after this election. Mm -hmm. So don't forget the words of Brian Unger.
Okay. Yeah, and and uh, we. Uh, <laughs> Nah, who gives a shit what I said? Yeah, no, and who gives I'm a curious. shit really what I said? <laughs> oh, you were good. I don't. Uh, also, like, uh, just something occurred to me, like with Brian talking about how I don't really, I wasn't listening totally, but he seemed angry. Um, uh, and, uh, wow, didn't know he had that fire in him. Yeah. Holy crap! No, but like, like uh, how media is never going to look the same and is never going back, and so you know, and it's one of my small issues with this uh, program here is that you know everything's different, but we. We still have a desk, and we still put on jackets and ties and so forth. And I, I even switched into a dress shirt. You did. You switched into a dress shirt. I just did the show shirtless. By the way, made, by the way, I'm the only person right now with a tie, so that was pretty blatant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I just feel like that look is like what's coming. Like you know, like we Brian's, should. Like, yeah, I've actually been feel- sent here by Vice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should dial down my enthusiasm and my passion and speak in a more yeah. monotone, <laughs> inexperienced way. Yeah, that- <laughs> but with a veneer. Yeah. Right. Sure. Uh, ben, are, ben, are you suggesting that I'm going for a real Williamsburg t- kind of passion right now. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'm. Let me bring it down a little bit. But you, you guys know what I mean. We saw a transformative period in cable news and in all of news where it, money is just dry ratings money it's so corrupt so infected it can never ever get back i wonder what it's like to work for these folks because you're now just a tool you believe if you're an anchor or if you're a reporter in this system you are being encouraged day in and every minute of the day to keep singing the the refrain, pushing the narrative. Mm -hmm. They are addicted to narrative, they are addicted to drama, they want you to stick around, constantly running out of time on a 24 hour clock. How is that possible? It It just makes no sense, but they're constantly trying to get you to hang on to every quarter hour so they can keep driving up the ad ad rates. We're never going back. CNN yesterday ran a ticker uh, below of uh, all the presidents, just in like in order, you know? Like, and then uh, Thomas Jefferson, and then James Madison. Like, wow. like, like, wow. like hey, man, we, we got it, man. I, I just, like, yeah, yeah. They're like, no, they... literally, there's nothing going on, right. so we have to but give we have you to have some down there. We got it. Right. But the amazing thing is, there's a ton of things going on that they right. refuse to cover. And no, they there's a, they some, they some, something cover, happening in North Dakota. Cover North Dakota. Yeah, yeah. They will not cover what's happening right. in North right, Dakota. Right, right. They refuse to cover those issues because, A, they think their audience is too dumb to understand or care about those issues. And, B, they think that those issues won't do well with ratings. And finally, see, let's keep it real. I mean, you go after the same companies that are advertising on your network, you're going to lose those advertisers. Yeah. So they say climate change isn't a sexy topic when the vast majority of Americans want to do something about climate change. That's mm-hmm. why you've got to drive the news. And if you're going to, you should probably rent with sixth rental car. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. All, all right. right, we gotta let Brian right. go. So, uh, but he's staying here for the members. Okay. So while we talk about the dry Senate races, uh, Brian is going to do some uh, funny stuff uh, with Ida Rodriguez at tytnetwork.com/slash join is how you join, and then you go to tytnetwork.com/slash members live to watch both streams. Will be going on at the same time. Pick your poison. Okay, and uh, and if you aren't getting it for some reason, you just refresh. But calmly, everybody do it at different times. By the way, if anything <laughs> breaks, everybody go to Twitter. Everybody at different times? I don't, I because know. if everybody does it simultaneously, everything it's crumbles. It's a tech but thing. But how do they know what other people are doing? Uh, okay, <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Half of you okay. wait. <laughs> Which half? <laughs> the ones on this side now, the ones on this side wait. At the Young Turks on Twitter. At the Young Turks on Twitter. Uh, and Brian's also going to join us on the Young Turks on Fusion tomorrow. Cannot wait. I'm so, oh, so awesome. grateful that you asked me to come. I'm I mean, super you guys are the smartest awesome. people in news. I'm so honored just to be here. So okay, thank you. Right. I just, no, I really I just am. Agree, thank you. Let's keep this guy around. No, I am, I, I am drunk on tier three basic cable money. I don't need the job or the exposure. I'm fine. <laughs> So my kissing up actually means that I, I really do admire you all Thank and you. appreciate it. Ben, what, why, what? No, well, I just I think did. the way you're the disrespecting of tier three basic cable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Young Turks on Fusion tomorrow at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern. Uh, Anna, John, and Brian will be doing the show and obviously analyzing what happened after the election. Thank you, Brian. We really, really, really appreciate Thank it. You. All right, and, and he's going to join you guys and the members only in about two minutes, okay? So now, uh, as uh, I previously promised, dry Senate races. John, go. Okay, I'll try to make it not quite so dry. So we're going to be starting off with uh, North Carolina. 
Uh, I, I'm not going to prompt for the pictures. You can just throw them up whenever you want. Uh, where we have Richard Burr uh, going up against uh, Deborah Ross. Uh, this is one of the most competitive Senate races uh, in the country right now. The 538 estimate is 50.7%. Uh, oh, sorry. Seven, no, actually, this is not one of the most competitive. 73.4% chance that Burr gets it. And the reason I think that's interesting in this particular case is that Richard Burr is the guy who not that long ago said, nothing made me feel better than seeing a magazine about rifles in a store with a picture of Hillary Clinton on it. And he Classy. said he was only disturbed because there wasn't a target over her face. And so Jesus. this is what we've unleashed in this country, and he is likely, unless things shift massively. Now, North Carolina is a state where we don't know exactly how things are going to shake out. Um, but in the, the past few sets of polls, he has generally been up by a few points, and that's considered... She's almost never led. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But it's never been anything but close. So, you know, if there's been some misreading of the polls, and if uh, Latino turnout is bigger in North Carolina, and if Hillary wins it by more than we think and wins it, you know, yeah. with the, then she could carry uh, Ross uh, over the finish yeah. line uh, now she, with her. She, this is one of the, the states, and this is going to be a common refrain throughout this, it's difficult to know because it's the end of an election, and most races do get tighter near the end of an election. Um, but this is also one of the ones where just around the same exact time that uh, Comey came out with his... Uh, we might be reopening the case thing. A lot of Senate races suddenly in the next few days became much closer. Almost directly almost, at that day. Exactly, and almost universally worse for the Democrats. So thank you to the FBI uh, for that. Um, um, can I just say on that two a couple of notes? One, that's why I read you guys the story from the Guardian yesterday, where uh, some sources, some agents that work inside the FBI said, "Hey, look, man, FBI is Trump land." So uh, we, um, he said, there's a lot of different opinions, of course. There's no love for Hillary Clinton in the building at all, but some people are really worried about Donald Trump too. But the majority are Trump supporters, mm -hmm. so they keep pushing and pushing and pushing to do to for Comey to say things about Hillary Clinton. And as we saw, um, it was unjustified. The last thing, the thing he did 11 days before the election, where he said, "Oh my God, there's new emails." Totally unjustified. It turns out there were no new emails; they were all repeats of and emails mostly, that had gone over. It didn't take that long to go through. And he hadn't read them. No one had yeah, read them when he yeah. said that. That's just why it was it's absurd. And, and so, in the case of North Carolina, back to there. Now, if Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton has been doing much better in North Carolina than uh, Republicans, than Democrats have done in the past, right? Uh, certainly, in the like, Obama also began to do better in North Carolina, right? Before that, North Carolina was not in any way, shape, or form a swing state. It was solidly yeah. red. And is demographically changing over time? Yeah. So now it really is, it's, it's a swing state. And so Hillary Clinton could win it. I mean, for a while I thought her numbers looked better in North Carolina than they did in, in some traditional swing states. By the way, that's still true today. I, they, I think her numbers there look better than her numbers in Ohio, which is traditionally one of the yeah. most stereotypical. Like the, yeah, stereotypical swing state. So um, if she surges and she wins there, then, you know, then obviously Ross, as Ben pointed out, might be in. But if you hear that Ross is in, that, that means Hillary Clinton has won. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. That's yeah. almost certainly uh, right. That's yeah. almost certainly uh, true. Now, before we go on to the next one, though, I want to say a couple of interesting facts about uh, the fight to control the Senate, which, of course, and I, I was just tweeting about this, extremely important because we right now, as we've had to keep repeating, uh, we have a Supreme Court that's 4-4, and we have indications from some prominent Republicans that they might have no interest, despite all of their rhetoric about saying that the voters should choose, uh, that they may never fill that spot. Um, which, by the way, if we have a repeat of 2000, it would be extremely interesting if it goes to a 4-4 split Supreme Court. What happens after that? Nobody actually knows in America. Um, but obviously very important uh, to gain control of the Senate. Now, one of the interesting things about this cycle is that Republicans hold 24 of the 34 seats that are up for re-election, which means that no matter what, this is a bad year for them. It also means that in future cycles, bad years are coming from Demo for Democrats. Yeah, 2018 um, is a catastrophe for It's Democrats. a catastrophe, yeah. Uh, so of the 10 seats that Democrats are defending, none are in states that were won by either John McCain or Mitt Romney. So that added on to that previous fact means this is a good year for Democrats. Uh, nine of the GOP-held seats uh, are in states that President Obama won in either 2008 or 2012. 
Still, though, the Democrats have, at the most recent estimation, a 50.7% chance of taking over, which means that despite the fact that this is a uniquely situated good cycle for them, there are other things that are dragging them down. So I have a macro point I want to make about the Democrats once John reads all the numbers for you, and we are going to go a little quicker through them yes. in a second. Uh, but uh, in the meanwhile, I, I really got to tell you t uh, two quick things that I forgot to mention earlier in the hour. One is a lot of you are wondering where the protest is going to be tonight, protest slash party. Uh, it's at Hillary Clinton's headquarters at Jacob Javits Center in New York. I want to, Jesus or, or Jacori, if you guys, whoever's back there, have the map uh, pull that up. It's on 37th Street and 11th Avenue that people are meeting up at 8 o'clock Eastern. And then uh, we're going to do meet and greets, we're going to do music, we're going to have a good time and demand that next time we have free and fair elections that Hillary Clinton not take big donor money. So that's on 37th uh, Street and 11th Avenue. And in order to get uh, updates as we go along, go to tytnetwork.com slash get updates. And if that location changes at all, probably if it does, it'll be because of police presence. If it does, we will text you, okay? So uh, if you're in New York, and I know a lot of you are, make sure that you sign is up it, for tytnetwork.com slash get updates. Is that near Hudson Yards Park? Uh, that's the thing that never happened, right? No, it was there on the map. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and, um, and look, everybody share away, okay? We've got to have everybody sharing here. If you're on, watching on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, you know how to share on Facebook, obviously, retweet on Twitter. And on YouTube, click the share button, you'll see how to share it on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and you'll, you can also embed, you can send the link to your family and friends. Let's get this uh, to be as large as possible. And look, yeah. Uh, some of you have written some great stuff. Real quick, uh, Marble Rivera wrote in, without a doubt, this day has been very energetic and informative, thanks to the Young Turks. And, and thank you for saying that, but that's exactly why it's insane. I'm maybe the most biased man in America in this regard. Insane to watch it anywhere but here, because why would you rather have it be drier? Yeah. <laughs> right? Where we, you have the same facts. In fact, you'll have more facts. Because we can pull from all of the other news stations, and we will. Yeah. Once the poll results start coming in, which, by the way, the first one from Indiana comes in in 27 minutes. Okay, we will have it as soon as the first other news organization yeah. has it. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. But that's funny. It well, is funny. But it actually gives us a huge advantage. Yeah. ABC doesn't have it. They know NBC has it. They're like, we can't say it. It's NBC. We can't say it. It's NBC. Yeah. Yeah, we we're... can tell you. We can give you the full context. And, and, and just for the record, we'll, I think mostly going to be looking at the New York Times. They were yeah. fantastic during the primaries and yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. and but yeah. we will be looking at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just from the, the hours where I haven't been on, but I've been watching, um, we're, we're, we have a day where we have uh, all of us, obviously, some of the most common faces. And, and we have Jimmy and Steve and Brian and Aida and Kyle and Nomi and all these people, like Sam and everything. Uh, that, that should be us more commonly in the future. Oh, I, I, I like that. Yeah, oh, I love it. I love when we, we all come to, together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then you've got tweets like this, Joanne Orzachowski. Oh, I think I did that okay, John. Proud TYT member, thank you for streaming live for 12 hours straight today. The only election coverage worth watching. Hashtag I voted. Hashtag nasty woman. Ooh. <laughs> I love it, Joanne. I love it. Yeah. So we're trying to give you as much as we can. You know our issues with resources. So that's why sometimes we got to hold, hold our powder dry for yeah. big days like election day. Thank you for being with us. Uh, but you can make our powder wetter. Hey, how you doing, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Pete Rose kept doing this during the Oh, Pete Rose? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going for the Chris Christie look. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, make our powder drier. No, wetter. This Wait. is really awkward. What? Yeah. TYT. Get a, <laughs> hashtag get us wet uh, by <laughs> becoming a member today. <laughs> TYTnetwork.com slash join. No, not moist. Join. Okay. okay. Let's, let's move away. Right. Okay, so now, okay. back to dry. Dry I'm gonna, center. I'm going to move through these faster. Cut me off when you want to. Some of the races that are uh, most likely going to end in one way or the other. Uh, Illinois is the the most likely to go for the Democrats right now, uh, with Tammy Duckworth uh, at about a 97 percent chance uh, of winning that race. Uh, now yeah, it should what, be Mark Kirk. He never should have had the seat in the first place. That's a Democratic yeah. seat. Should always be. Yeah. Exactly. And he made the bad uh, decision of in one of their debates, he mocked her heritage. He gave a great apology afterward, but the damage uh, by then was yeah. already done. And in most recent polls, she's up by 14 or 18 points. Uh, and I'm it had sorry. been close before then to some extent. What had you mocked? He mocked her heritage. Oh, her heritage. Yeah. I thought Not something her hair. about her hair. I'm like, no, he might have yeah. said something about that her That usually works really well for Republicans during so this election. So she talked about how her... Uh, 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 her ancestors had been had served in the U.S. military since as, Washington, since George Washington, but half of her uh, family is white; the other half is uh, Asian, right? 
Thai? Thai, Thai. yeah. Yes. And Thank so, you. but he doesn't realize half her family is white, so he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure she goes back to George Washington. Yeah, they right. came over from and Thailand he, to fight for Washington. Yeah. Like, oh, you, you idiot. Schmuck. You idiot. Right. Okay. It's surprising that that hurt him as yeah. much as it did. By the way, well, no, uh, it's Illinois. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's a very blue state. That's yeah. why, as Ben pointed out, he never should have had the seat in the first place. Yeah. Also, this is an example of why politicians almost never go off script. Because things like that happen. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. That, that, he was headed for a loss anyway, but yes. Yeah, yeah. probably, probably, but it accelerated after that. Uh, now, Marco Rubio, who said that he wasn't going to run again, then decided, oh, I like being on TV, uh, and I want to run again uh, for the presidency in the future, is going up against Patrick Murphy. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to be on TV. Uh, so he is now at about an 89.3% chance of uh, defeating Patrick Murphy, wow. uh, which a lot of people called when Patrick Murphy won the primary. Uh, because for weeks now, every poll has been pro Rubio, from plus one all the way up to plus eleven. Although Rubio. Rubio, you know, for whatever it's worth, when Rubio was compared to uh, 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 Grayson, he had an even bigger lead. I mean, maybe Grayson would have run a better race, but but okay. Rubio coming back into the race uh, tilted the race toward the Republicans. Yeah. So look, Grayson got murdered on the uh, whole family brouhaha, yeah. right? Let alone the hedge fund stuff, right? So at that point, in his race against Patrick Murphy turned out to be not close at all. Uh, now, to what degree that's true, not true, hatchet job, uh, I don't know, I don't want to get into it, right? I don't want to rehash that. But that's because that's not important. What's important is the macro picture, the overall picture. And the overall picture is, in the state of Florida, and this is a larger problem for the Democrats overall that we're going to discuss at the end, is that they keep running pro-establishment candidates thinking that this is a genius move. Yeah. But they're milk toast. it's not an interesting move, you'd be a thousand times better off running a populist yeah. candidate. It, it definitely doesn't have to be Grayson, but it has to be someone who's saying, hey, I'm going to look out for you. Instead, they keep on going to, uh, I'm also going to look out for corporate interests, but not quite as much as the Republican. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they keep losing because that's the inevitable result of that strategy. Yeah. And it was super fast. When we were in Miami for the Fusion show, uh, we, we talked briefly about this. And I said, it, it's, I know sometimes you just support the party, but this is a guy who came in, he was your senator, did jack shit for six years, did nothing. He and his supporters in the, the his surrogates in the media could not come up with an accomplishment of his, ran for president as soon as he could, said he wouldn't run again, and then once he, he wasn't going to be president, decides, eh, I guess I'll be senate again, a senator again. And for the people of Florida to be like, yes, he's our public servant. I want him. No, man, he's not your guy. He's not going to do any more this time around. He's still once again just sitting and waiting for the next chance that he can run to be the Republican nominee. Yeah, it's a it's a shame. You know, Democrats pulled money out of Florida. I think too early. There were a lot of mainstream Democrats who thought that the uh, the that the party abandoned Murphy much too quickly, and then they put money back in when they saw a poll came out. Yeah. It was only down by three or four points, and. But it's probably too late. Um, yeah. The uh, 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 unlike, like if Clinton wins North Carolina, as we said, there's a good chance that she carries Ross with her, especially if she wins by by three or four points. Even if Clinton wins Florida by three, four, yeah. five points, it's unlikely that she'll carry Patrick Murphy with her. Yeah. And Rubio was beatable. But it does. Last thing on this is that his main advantage is not that he was so great for the state of Florida, as John points out, or anything like that. Name recognition. Name recognition. Yeah. And so that gives you a sense of why the hill that Bernie Sanders had to climb was so difficult. Because yeah. everyone in the country knows who Hillary Clinton is. She has like nearly 99% name recognition. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders had like 1% name recognition when he started. Yeah. So that is that is a Herculean task. Yeah. And he almost did it. Right, yeah. so and that's why a guy like Marco Rubio, even though he's a, you know a, a do nothing, clear, obvious, slimy politician, is going to win easily because he already has name recognition. Yeah, it is deeply frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now uh, we do have some competitive races as well. We're, uh, I'm pretending like we're we're just bopping back and forth. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason, but we're going to New Hampshire, which is going to be one of the most watched uh, states for the presidential race. Also. Uh, for the Senate, where you have Kelly Ayotte, a uh, Republican, going against Maggie uh, Hassan. Uh, currently, Hassan has about a 53% chance of winning. The polls have bounced back and forth, uh, with either leading by two or three, almost cyclically at this point. Um, Ayotte, throughout the past couple of months, has had a... It, you've seen this in a couple of races, actually. Um, she's had a very carefully 
not support Donald Trump while not speaking out against him too much. She was more against him than some of the candidates we're going to talk about. Um, but Trump being the nominee has made her chances significantly lower than they would have otherwise been. Absolutely. And I think that she wasn't so careful. I think that, you know, her flip flopping was very, very transparent. And I mm -hmm. think that a lot of voters got turned off by that, especially when it came to the right. question of whether or not she thought that Donald Trump was a good role model. Like within the same debate, she yeah. flip-flopped on that issue, and I think mm. it did hurt yeah, her. Yeah, huge problem. Just answer that. Just say no. Yeah, like, just say so no. so huge help if she said no during that, because then it wouldn't have been perceived. Not so much as, to, I wouldn't necessarily call it flip-flopping, but, but, but calculating, which is mm -hmm. almost worse. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she seemed, and it's clearly, uh, uh, it's clearly hurt her. She's the candidate sort of most hurt, uh, maybe Joe Heck, uh, from being tied to, to Trump. I would say, I, I predict that later tonight, Joe Heck will have been hurt more percentage-wise. But we'll get to that. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, Democratic candidate pronounced her name Maggie Hassan in order to uh, avoid any association with uh, Hassan Piker. Uh, so, <laughs> understandable. Um, She's got to yes. carefully toe that line. Yeah, she she doesn't want to get uh, trying to stuck answering questions about are you pro or against bro dip. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, in, in all seriousness, I, I can't stand Kelly Ayotte. Uh, the reason yeah. for that is because she's got such a pleasant face. So the mainstream yeah, media does. that focuses on nothing but uh, trivialities and, and looks at the surface are like, Kelly Ayotte, what a wonderfully moderate uh, senator from New Hampshire. No, she <coughs> is among the top three warmongers in the United States Senate. Her, she replaced Joe Lieberman in the triumvirate of Lindsey Graham and John McCain, and, and now it's Kelly Ayotte. There isn't a war that Kelly Ayotte hasn't fallen head over heels in love with. So, you know, for those of you saying, oh, Hillary Clinton is too much of a warmonger, I hear you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you see Kelly Ayotte. Yeah. So she's in that, she's, right. you know, if they have the NASCAR, uh, you know, kind of jackets and they had their donors as, their, as they do, at least NASCAR is super honest about it. That's what I like about it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, her, most of her buttons would be defense contractors. Yeah. So some people are, you know, more oil companies, some people are more pharmaceuticals. Kelly Ayotte is like, yeah. Defense contractors, I'm right here, <laughs> going once, going twice. So I would love for her to lose. And in New Hampshire, come on, New Hampshire, you could do better than that. Yeah. And right now, luckily, the last last set of polls in New Hampshire showed a big trend in Hillary Clinton's direction before the heart, yeah. you know, right after the heart attack of a couple going in Trump's direction. There so hasn't I, been a lot of last minute Senate polling, which makes mm -hmm. it harder to know if it, it's likely to also help out. Um, yeah, Ke Kelly Ayotte is enormously beatable. If the Democrats can't beat her, that's really yeah. sad. Uh, now, if we uh, fly over to Missouri, uh, Roy Blunt, the Republican, is about a 57% chance of beating Jason Kander. Uh, Jason Kander, we, I think we showed when it came out, he had uh, one of the most memorable political ads of the cycle where he's assembling a uh, rifle from his time in the military, I believe he's a Marine, uh, while blindfolded. Which, what's interesting about this race is that he has a, a very good chance of winning Kander. I mean, it's likely to go with Roy Blunt, but he could win uh, in a state that in the presidential race is, that's, that's Trump land right there. Mm -hmm. And so you have a huge gap between the Senate and the presidential race. Missouri has, uh, sorry, Missouri. Uh, has always had a uh, a peculiar tendency to uh, elect, especially lately, Republicans uh, in presidential elections, but consistently elects governors to the Senate, Claire McCaskill, uh, mm -hmm. governors to the, uh, uh, dem sorry, Democrats to the Senate and Democrats to the governorship, statewide offices. Frequently. Connecticut's like the opposite. Yeah, they, 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 they mix. Yeah. Yeah, Even so though, like, because Trump is ahead in Missouri by, you know, anywhere from 8 to 15 points. Exactly, it's not close. Yeah. Yeah, so even with that history, it's surprising that he's that close. Now, here's my theory as to why. <laughs> okay, so okay, so there's two <laughs> parts of this, right? Now, uh, knucklehead. It's not because they're stupid. I gotta stop saying that. They they get d the same donations, right? So they think, okay, let's run conservative uh, people in conservative states. Now, in the, on the surface, you might think, oh, that's smart, right? Okay, you can't be as liberal in a state like Missouri as you would in a state like Rhode Island. Okay, all right, I get it. But liberal or conservative, how? And they say, let's run socially, I'm sorry, economically conservative people that are going to be pro-corporate, pro-business, pro-tax cuts, all that stuff, right? But people don't want that. They don't want it from the Republicans, they don't want it from the Democrats, as Trump has shown in, in some ways the rise of populism, etc. In this case of candor, they did the opposite. So, and he did two things that are really interesting. One, 
by doing that gun ad, he showed, no, I'm more conservative socially. Now, I might not like that, okay, there's a twist to it, but I might not like that, but that is a more effective strategy in a red state to be socially conservative rather than economically conservative. Also, it stops you from immediately being sunk with, this guy's going to take away your guns. That's right. Nobody buys that after that ad. And then he did a second thing within that same ad that was so strong. And then after he did that, he said, I'm for background checks. Because we've got to have some sort of sanity here. It, obviously, I know how to handle a weapon, right? So, see, that's, that's smart. Because you, you go, hey, I, I love my gun. Here it is. Mm -hmm. you, you think you can put it together better than I can, right? I served, I did all this. But guys, we've got to be sane. And that's a strong politician. People love strong politicians. That's why he's got a decent shot at beating a guy he shouldn't even be in the race with. Yeah. So yeah. that's the right strategy. Uh, I have a different theory as to why he's winning, but I'm going to need to see those photos again. <laughs> so let's uh, put up. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, let's yeah. put up. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Look, he looks like the Joker after he put his makeup on. Roy it's, Blunt. It's the I mean, Joker versus Donald Gleason. Right. It's the Joker versus a human being who's identifiable. And yeah. I mean, and look at that. He's With like the Young style. Roy not, Blunt. Not too excited, but identifiable for sure. Sure. Right. It's okay. It's a serious job. Yeah. Serious yeah. man for a serious job. Roy Blunt <laughs> went, went to when Ben Nelson left the Senate. Roy Blunt yeah. said, "Before you go, Ben, tell me who does your hair." <laughs> uh, I want that guy. It always comes back to that. Look at it. It's the fakest dude in the history. The smile's fake. The hair's fake. Yes, every, the eyebrows are fake. Everything is fake about that guy. Nothing could be more yeah. inauthentic about Roy Blunt. I am so excited about the possibility of Roy Blunt losing yes. that it will offset little things like Marco, Marco Rubio winning. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it would just mm. be so delightful to have Roy Blunt lose because it really, as Jenk mentioned, you know, uh, about a month ago, it sort of seemed to, might have the timing wrong there, it kind of came out of nowhere where you were like, what's happening in Missouri? Mm -hmm. what's, what's this in Missouri? What's which makes up Missouri? for, you know, which you'll mention, you know, just sort of massive Democratic underperformances in Ohio where yeah. nine months ago we thought it was a great chance to pick up. Okay, now we got to really speed up through the rest. Okay, okay, I think one of the most interesting ones, we, we alluded to this earlier, so if you go to Nevada, uh, mm -hmm. Catherine uh, Cortez Masto against uh, Joe Heck, the Republican. Uh, the Democrats had about a 60% chance of winning. Recent polls generally have her at plus two, plus three, although there are a few going in the Republicans' uh, direction as well. Now, what's interesting is back in 2012, uh, Dean Heller, the Republican, won by one point, even though Obama won the state by six, which means that even if Hillary Clinton does uh, overperform, if this one anecdote says anything, we don't know for sure that the Democrat will win the Senate. But I do think that this is perhaps going to be the senator who is most hurt by Donald Trump. That one, he uh, stimulates young Nevadans and Hispanic voters to go out and vote against him. Also, the lack of a ground game when you're, it's two points basically that separates them could be all it takes for him to be defeated. And if the early voting uh, evidence that we have is any indication, it might be a bad night uh, for Joe. Yeah, I, I, go ahead, Jessica. Sorry, there, I mean, look, there are a lot of predictions about what's gonna happen in battleground states like Nevada and, and Florida, but we'll see how it all plays out. I am delight, delighted by the idea that Latinos will not only defeat Republican Senate candidates, uh, but also defeat Trump, right? Yeah, that right. They're, they're so angry with the type of rhetoric that he's used against them that they are now, you know, motivated enough to go to the polls and, and speak out. It's, we'll see. So how. there's a lot of evidence that, that there is evidence. Mm -hmm. Let's not categorize it. There is evidence that Latinos were under polled because the Latinos who do get polled are English speaking and that the non-English speaking Latinos are by very nature of telephone polling under polled. Yeah. Uh, the evidence in, in, in Nevada was anecdotal except the, uh, of who was in line. But we know the lines were significant and we know Democrats turned out at a much greater rate. The, the anecdotal evidence was in Clark County, all those hotel workers, many of them Latino voting late at night, from seasoned political observers there like John Ralston were that, hey, uh, uh, this seems to be a big Latino turnout. Uh, I think it helps that I, here's some nonsense punditry based on nothing. I like the fact that every state where there's a woman running as the Democrat, it just feels like might help a little. You're like, hey, I'm voting for a woman for president. I'm going to vote for a woman here in the Senate. So I like that. 
I like her name, I like her last name, and I just feel like, and I don't mean this pejoratively at all, but I mean I feel like there is some chance that if Democrats are at 50-50 or 51-49 in the Senate and Hillary Clinton has been elected president, that one of the main storylines tomorrow is that literally every right-thinking person in this country, when they see a person of uh, Latino origin or descent, uh, needs to say a gigantic gracias, that, that that may be the story that, my God, here's who put us over the top, here's who came through, because a lot of people who don't vote, I am just imagining, I don't know it, are saying, you know, uh, this time... <laughs> I, I, I know evil and I know hate and I know discrimination when I see it and I'm going to stop this guy. Well, ironically, Latinos might have built a wall between Trump and the White House. Mm. Mm. That's ironic because and he wants Joe to Heck's build a wall. And Joe Heck's going to pay for it. No. <laughs> no, no, Trump now complaining, today complaining that he spent $100 million on this campaign and might lose and it might be all wasted. Yeah. Turns out Latinos built a wall between Trump and the White House and Trump paid for yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. And by the way, he didn't, he didn't actually pay $100 million. He's just trying to make you think he spent more than he did. Uh, so really fast, uh, if we go to Pennsylvania, Pat Toomey, the Republican against Katie McGinty. Uh, the Democrat, Katie McGinty, at a little bit over 60% odds of winning. All of the recent polls over the past few weeks, a couple dozen polls have her up by one to four. Obviously, this is a state that we we know that Hillary Clinton is up by three points, maybe four points, which is less than a month ago. We also know there's no early voting, so we don't have this sort of Nevada uh, evidence to go on. If Hillary Clinton underperforms or if she overperforms, that's going to have consequences for Katie McGinty. Yep. Pat Toomey used to be... Uh, considered wildly right wing, like what, 10, 12 yeah, yeah. years ago, yeah. and thought, like, oh, we can't put an insane right winger like that. Now yeah. he's among the more moderate of the Republicans, and his position has not changed one iota. Yeah. It's because the Republican Party has become that insanely right wing. Yeah. A uh, bit of good news, perhaps, if we go to Wisconsin. Uh, it looks like Russ Feingold has a slightly better than 80% chance of beating Ron Johnson. No, uh, although, so the polls generally have Feingold up by two points, by three points. Uh, the last poll I believe that was released was released by Marquette University, which is considered to be a very reputable pollster for polling Wisconsin, had it at a tie. Yeah. I'm so, so that's horrifying. About that. But that, I believe, was before the um, Comey second bombshell. Yeah, I can't imagine. So that's going to be that's going to be a close. Ron one. Johnson has no business being in the United States Senate in any way. Forget, Especially for Wisconsin. Forget the 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 greatness of Russ Feingold. Ron Johnson is an embarrassment as a United States senator. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a you know incredibly wealthy guy, self funded his campaign, and still manages to be beholden to special interest. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, and and Russ gift. Feingold needs to get into the Senate. Uh, if he's going to be the 2020 Democratic nominee for president. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, oh, I wonder if they, that affected how much they helped him. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. By the way, he endorsed Hillary Clinton, so it's not like he was No, no, I know. Yeah. Come on, sure. Wisconsin. I'm really, really worried about that race. And It would, it would hurt. It it's, would hurt real bad if Feingold yeah, it's lost. It's a sign that because... Be, look, then you'd have, if Feingold wins, then you have Sanders, Warren... And uh, Feingold. Feingold. That's, yeah, that is three unassailable... Uh, liberals, let alone Sherrod Brown and Merkley in Oregon. Now we're getting now we're getting somewhere, right? Yeah. But if you knock out Feingold, his career is done, and that's a damn. And we shame. hope uh, we hope uh, uh, Kamala Harris. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah, totally. And 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 it's also like if Feingold doesn't win, it's a suggestion that this was a very bad night because yeah. even though the numbers got closer, the projections again by like five thirty eight, their understanding of the. State, uh, let alone everybody else who's projecting this. It's just this is a race Democrats yeah, should, should win. It should pick yeah. up, and Feingold should win. So yeah, and remember, I, I should have said this when we were talking about the, how important it is that they take over the Senate. Obviously, having those people in the Senate is great. Having control of it makes Bernie Sanders the head of the Senate Finance Committee, puts him in basically in charge of the federal budget. Means, on the Senate means side. you might you incredibly might, important. You might get a ninth Supreme Court justice sometime in the next four years. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then finally, if we go to Indiana, uh, Evan B uh, Bye against uh, Todd <coughs> Young. Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I, I believe that's on, um, Evan Bayes at a 31.5% chance. Down from like 75 three yeah, exactly. weeks ago. I mean, nobody has screwed up an election more than Evan Bayes. But Evan Bayes, yeah, I shouldn't be too critical. Uh, I, we have something in common. Uh, we've both spent as much time in Indiana. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I go about as often as Evan Bayes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Evan Bai, uh, of course, became a lobbyist immediately thereafter, the, the leaving most, the Senate. The most recent uh, poll, by the way, I, I, I don't remember how reputable it was, but the most recent poll has Todd Young up by 12. 
That's probably not. Evan Mai screams smarmy fake politician uh, with Wall Street's best interests in mind, and that is what he is. And I feel like there was also one at six. He's lost it, I think. That race is over. And, and he was up 18 points. 18 points. Democrats thought they'd guaranteed a pickup uh, when they were able to recruit uh, by to come back and run for his old seat, but he—I mean, he—he he has a condo in Indianapolis, and he kept going to Indianapolis, and he'd stay in a hotel and bill taxpayers. It's just such stupid. Oh. Mm -hmm. He's so unbearable. Yeah, 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 and he's beloved by the establishment, beloved by Morning Not Joe, he, yeah. and that's exactly why he's going to lose. Yeah. Okay, all right, we got to go. Uh, we're, the main show, the regular show, coming up, uh, and uh, and Michael Shore just sent me a note. He has been allowed into the building. He is at Trump headquarters. Mm. So we're going to have Jordan Chertan at Hillary Clinton headquarters, Michael Short at Trump headquarters. For, oh my God, if he, Trump loses and Michael's there, he's going to get priceless footage. Okay, so we'll be right back. Stay right where you are. <laughs> Somebody's lurking. Somebody's lurking. We have a thousand Trump. things to tell you. Uh, I have a. I got promotions for you. I've got tweets for you. We've got a lot of stories for you guys from today. But we got to start with Ben Mankiewicz here and his board. <laughs> Go. Oh yeah. So first of all, a reminder: the board has been through it at TYT before. This is 2012. Oh. I don't know where 2008 went, but it's mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the 2012 board. Uh, we got uh, all of a pullback a little bit there so we can get the full, or I'll raise it up there. Uh, so uh, the blue numbers are states that we know Clinton's going to win mm -hmm. below. And as they come in, we'll move them up. Yeah. Notice the I have Hawaii in the toss-up category, but yeah. <laughs> you do? <laughs> uh, notice, uh, take it again, notice the uh, asterisk on Washington. That's just because of that nonsense elector in Washington that yeah. uh, she might two. only get. Two, potentially two. One definite and another there. Uh, and then uh, Maine. Uh, there's the asterisk because there's another congressional district and another electoral vote there. You'll see the asterisk on the red states for Trump and Nebraska, uh, where the same thing, uh, there's a, a potential one electoral vote that could go to Clinton. Um, there and then in the middle in green are all the toss-up states. And we have liberal use of toss-up states because we want to make it fun make it and fun. dramatic. Yeah. Uh, and also you'll note that uh, the green circle around Utah, the green circle everyone knows is meant to represent Evan McMullen. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> just to keep in mind that, that that's not going to go to Hillary. It's going to go to a Republican, but it might not go to that Republican. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and note to self for future elections: green, not a great color for uh, the camera. Oh, you know what? We no. can. Uh, by the way, by the time results start rolling in, I can do something about that. I can orange that up. I can black it up. Mm, oh, interesting. Okay. I like black, okay. but I'll need but I'll need a moment. So <laughs> now, uh, since you've got that up, uh, let's go back and resolve the. Issue we started in hour one. Oh, okay? yeah. Right. Now, this, we've already gone through five hours. It feels like five minutes to me. I it swear. really does. Like, it's I feel like, by. what the hell, where did the five hours go? But luckily, don't worry, we've got seven hours left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> at least. A and we've got a member stream going on at the same time, tytnetwork.com slash join. So, Ben, my six swing states were Nevada, Colorado, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Florida. Um, so, you have them all, you have all the ones. So you have Michigan and Arizona and Georgia. Ohio, yeah, I mean, I have uh, I have Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Iowa, New Hampshire, Maine, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and the two districts: one, the one electoral vote in Maine, one in Nevada. So you even have Wisconsin and Minnesota, which is come on. It just means that we can take them off a more fun part of the board, <laughs> also, <laughs> and, and Trump. give them to Hillary Clinton. But yeah, I got you. We could obviously move those over to Hillary Clinton right now if you want. 
Uh-huh. Trump, <laughs> you know, no, no, it's okay. Trump it's has okay. campaigned. Yeah, he's campaigned. There are any state, amount. any state that vaguely the loosest definition of swing state, which mm-hmm. means Texas does not make it, but Arizona, Georgia, and and if Arizona and Georgia make it, then Wisconsin and Minnesota also have to and, make it and under this, that standard. Minnesota, really. Yeah, and this election has been different than the ones that, that we've seen. I mean, look, let's keep it real. It's also very, very similar. Like Hawaii and Rhode Island are going to be blue by a freaking landslide. I saw this morning. Trump's winning in Alabama by 43 points. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and so, by the way, another wow. state that could be considered uh, on either side, I, I don't remember, I, I think I put New Mexico in the swing state category because there's a couple polls that, uh, that only has her up uh, uh, by three points. So, um, She's at like an 80% chance, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, but also there was a poll, uh, two polls earlier, that it's a tough state to poll, uh, Alaska, oddly enough, mm-hmm. super competitive. But then I saw a poll today, I think, that he's up. 14 in Alaska, so yeah. we it's have not, Alaskan, it's, right? They're Republicans, obviously, very conservative, but they're not really Trump Republicans up in Alaska, I don't think. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I don't know how we know that, but okay. That's, I, that's my feeling. I know, no, I feel like you did research it's on like it. It's like New Hampshire. Okay, to some so, but the reason I say it's weird is because sometimes she'll be closer in Texas than, than, than Trump is, is close in Minnesota, right? And, and yeah. And, and North Carolina becomes more and more blue by the day. South Carolina, like uh-huh. there's, you want to find a poll where Trump's ahead by three in South Carolina? You can find it by a real polling organization. Hmm. It, look, look, the, the demographic advantage that Democrats have grows every single year, right? No, it doesn't. That's what Republicans say. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And, does not. Does not. Does and, not. And, and in fact, it's like I me and Jimmy arguing. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I have a friend who says, like, hey, whatever happened to that stupid demographic advantage? I thought the Republicans were supposed to have no chance in this election. Well, it looks like that demographic advantage is real, and that's why Hillary Clinton is now much closer to being president, and much more. Like, I think she would have, you know, if this was eight years ago, the demographics yeah. of eight years, I yeah. think we'd be in a lot of trouble. But eight Definitely. years from now, when North Carolina is solidly blue and Texas is teetering on the edge, and Georgia's slipping over into blue, and Georgia and is Arizona. slipping over into blue, and, Georgia and not Arizona, number of electoral right. votes. and there are not equal and opposite states going red. It's not like, ooh, when Connecticut and Rhode Island go red. That is not happening, and it's not going to happen. Except perhaps Ohio moving a bit from swinginess to, eh, No, that's true. Red. Very and, fair and, point. And, and, and reason, an important state, too. And the reason but that's it, it, though. That's the only one I have yeah, on that's the board. The, and the reason it doesn't, and it might, is because the... The demographics in Ohio aren't reflective of the country. The state has actually gotten slightly whiter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and by the way, so if you a long time young tourist fan, if you're wondering if every show from now on Ben is going to have that board in front of his face, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, this is the new look. <laughs> uh, it's like Glenn Beck's chalkboard. <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> see the man behind the scenes. You see yeah. that? Wait, uh, the, running things. The Jew behind yeah, the scenes. Global running things. special yeah. interests. <laughs> So you're like the neighbor in tool time. <laughs> <laughs> totally That's right. the other way of going looking yeah. at it, right? Okay, and finally, before we get on to the stories and the and the tweets and all that, let us note uh, John Idorola's new hairstyle. It's been five hours. No one's noted it. I noticed. I didn't yeah. say anything. I don't know we're supposed to say something. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's David Beckhamish. Yes. I actually think it looks right. great. I didn't think about that. David yeah. Beckham. People like him, don't they? Yeah, they, uh, they do. I mean, he's not a fencing star, I'm, so you I'm wouldn't shocked. know. I'm Like, I posted a photo, and people, like, my head is this tiny in the photo. I'm like, how can you tell? This is literally my hair grew for a week. And instead of buzzing the whole thing, we just buzz the sides. That's the only Let's, difference. Uh, it's a here's giant the thing. Difference. Here's the thing about John. I hate to say this. Uh-huh. It's a little hunky. Oh, you think so? I do. Yeah, I feel like that's growing. Like that yeah, totally. Thing, like, no, like if you look at a picture of John from five years ago, I mean, no wonder no nobody slept with him, right? Yeah, no. Right, but like you look now and you think. <laughs> now, eight years ago, <laughs> not so bad. I'd do eight years ago, John. Okay. Four years ago. <laughs> yeah, but like all of a sudden, Johnny Pie's a thing. Or Johnny Pie's a thing, and yeah. he's like, yeah, like, yeah, you have to respect. <laughs> he walks in the room. You gotta, you know, you gotta give him, gotta give him room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, right. I'm just waiting for the drop now. No. Nope. Okay, no, so no, no there's no drop. Okay, I'll take. Okay, it. I'll oh, tell look, you you're what. gonna say I'll take ten or fifteen stupid things in the next couple hours. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. And there we go. <laughs> so we'll have plenty of opportunity. And um, by the way, Johnny Pie also living up to his other nickname, Johnny Time, the only guy in the. Oh, yeah, right. even though uh, I did poll the audience, uh, mm-hmm. Johnny Pie or Johnny Tie on Election Day, and uh, two out of three said, "No, don't wear a tie, you moron." Uh-huh. But nonetheless, <laughs> and, uh, I did it anyway because I'm not a democratic sort of individual. That's right. Uh, and uh, and 
super last comment on John's looks, which we apparently spent way too much time on. Uh, John looks more Italian. I mean, his last name is Idarola, remember, right? John looks more Italian in pictures. John looks like I don't know what you look like on video, okay, or in person. Yeah. Every picture on Instagram, you look like the most Italian dude I have ever seen. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, uh, just to balance this out, because I have low self-esteem, so I have to do this. Uh, so I've been traveling a lot, flying a lot, uh -huh. and like you're a comedian, you fly a lot. Just jet lag is just you're, it's always you're always, always tired. So all my pictures for several weeks on Instagram, people have been like, "Oh my God, John looks exhausted." And I was yeah. like. Fine, I am exhausted. Um, but we didn't go to the East Coast for this last episode. It was in Reno, and I slept a good eight hours. And all the comments on today's photos are, "John looks really tired." And I'm like, "This is this is literally just me. I'm not tired at all. This is what I look like." Chad, if your hair thanks, if okay. your hair grows another half inch, I think you could be the guy who fights the next guy in Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Drago! Okay. Okay, I'll take All that. Right. I like that movie. Uh, movie. Andy Hanani writes in the whole world is following uh, the election day, and we're here, and we here in Budapest are watching TYT. I like them because they say it as it is. Okay, that's, I love that. I love our international audience. I love no, our American audience too. After right? this election, in addition to creating more of an online community with all progressives, uh, we need to give more love to our international viewers. I, I, I have some ideas. So with you. Yeah. Like people say, hey, you guys should do an international show. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Tytnetwork.com slash join. Give yeah. us the ability to do that. All right. Captain Picard has written in, and he said, "Get the boy off the bridge." No. Okay. He said, "Engage." No. He said, "Fire." No. He didn't say any of that. <laughs> he wrote. He said, uh, "LOL." Watching all this old GOP primary videos, I remember how I looked forward to Tyt primary coverage as much as Game of Thrones episodes. That's wow. it. We should all retire. That is as high a praise as you can get. Online, so Captain Picard. And they, hats they, off to you, hair off to you as well. They ended in a similar way: red wedding and Bernie not winning. Do you have tr uh, Trent uh, T R G nineteen? Uh, Trent says my nickname should be Wilson, and he's shown the photo of just my eyes <laughs> above the sign. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No, Wilson. I'm sorry, Wilson. I'm this sorry. Is, this I hope is, I don't say that at the end of the night. <laughs> this is how much of a like a, a child I am, I guess. When he brought out that thing, that little prop. I'm excited to see it like filled out. Yeah, no, it's, it's totally it's, fun. It's, it's we get to are write fun. it ourselves. Right. Are fun. Yeah. All right, last one. Derek H. 1029 says, "I wish we had California ballot initiatives instead of we're voting to add hunting to the Indiana <laughs> Constitution." <laughs> to the Constitution. Uh, now you got to you realize in Indiana, you got to be allowed to hunt. <laughs> yeah, you could, of course you could hunt in Indiana. Of course you can. You don't have to add that to the Constitution. All right. By the way, no, you partly <laughs> wish they you mean? had our ballot initiatives. Uh, which I hope we'll get a chance to talk about either. We might literally run out of time on a 12 hour show, but I hope we talk about it later because we have some wonderful ones, including marijuana legalization. Today might be the day, the day. where we break, the, we break their back, we break them like a boy, and marijuana becomes legal in too many places for them tonight. It's on nine different states' ballot initiatives. If it, if I voted against it. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it did become I did. He was high. He, he didn't know what it said. And when it's illegal, it's cooler. It's yeah. cooler when it's illegal. But they're going to be able to deliver it soon. <laughs> I have to get it delivered. No, oh, ahead. really? Yeah. I give it to Jimmy. I really, I'm not kidding. There is, where is going to, where am I going to be, get my cool cred from now, right? It's like, that's my thing. It's subversive to smoke pop. Now, you know, when Coors starts selling pot, mm -hmm. you know, when Budweiser has their own version of a joint, it's not going to be cool anymore. You know what it's going to be called, Budweiser's version? Budweiser. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, uh, Budweiser. Um, uh, I've, I've heard uh, your show is very popular. I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> show yeah. popular. I've also, uh, I mean, I, heroin. Yeah, I'll have to switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, in California, we, we could also abolish the death penalty today. Let's do that. I voted for that. Yes. Yep. Uh, and or uh, we could speed it up. You could do either. <laughs> that is 60, also on the ballot. Sixty-one is the pharma. Yeah. Uh, a ballot proposition sixty-one. If you vote yes on that, it helps crush or it helps bring reasonable pricing to pharmaceuticals in California. Bernie was here just like two days ago speaking. In favor pro of that. Bernie's very pro sixty-one. They have veterans groups, ubiquitous commercials all over the place. Every one of my videos, they have that veterans group saying vote against sixty-one. But it turns out every veterans group that's uh, opposed to sixty-one took money from the pharmaceutical industry. No, took, uh, took I can't believe that. Uh, and we also have a prop here, Prop 59, to get money out of politics. I, I wish it had more force of law, but great, vote yes. Definitely. You want to encourage people, vote yes. Also, yeah. we could possibly finally ban plastic bags across the state. 
<laughs> no, and that's what I was going to get to, though, but you don't want to. No, 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 but here's the weird thing, is this is how stupid ballot initiatives gotten. We might be able to ban plastic bags while also forcing porn stars to use plastic bags. <laughs> in the same that's day. Right. That's Bang. Right. I actually disagreed with progressive positions three times on California ballots. Which ones? Which, which ones? Yeah, we'll save it for the show. Okay. okay. This okay. is the show. <laughs> this is the show. <laughs> well, well, Anna, We're doing go, the show. Anna's going to go through all the ballot initiatives. <laughs> 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 I thought we were just Who's talking. having this much fun? <laughs> right, right now, Corey Lewandowski and Wolf Blitzer are looking at each other like this. <laughs> okay. No, Wolf's, tell, Wolf's telling that elevator story. What are you talking about? <laughs> Get it? Get it? That's on CNN online. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's on their golden stream. Listen, what are the three progressive uh, things you voted against? Just tell me. Because okay. I won't be here. Okay, all right. Uh, let me see what, what you remember. Be? Uh, I think that someone's going to replace me. Because we'll keep rotating. Yeah, we'll be here at some point. Uh, but I want to know. Go home. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I I I always vote with the smokers, uh, and I and uh, I know no a lot tax of, tax no tax on the smokers. Okay. Uh, all the smokers in the studio are like yes. I okay. Uh, yeah, I voted. I voted tax, but I I, yeah. I think it's a reasonable argument to me. I, I voted no on condoms. I've uh, been voting no on condoms my whole life. I don't think that's a progressive. No, that's, that's not, not a progressive yeah. position. Progressive no. position. Progressive Fuck position. That. Fuck that. Oh no, we, we all voted issue. no. Yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting, ridiculous. but no, and, uh, and, and progressive online, say no to porno. Yeah, uh, don't to the condom. Yeah, that's right. No, 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 that no. is progressive. But okay, the one the progressive website that I saw was saying yes, make them wear condoms. Yeah. really. Yeah, we I also have, have to be consistent. I'm not going to force them to use something I won't use in my personal life. Burr. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. By the you, way, you, you were condoms. making too many condom jokes. Okay, wear sorry, condoms. Sorry. You don't wear have condoms. to wear yeah, the condom, John, when you do that. <laughs> 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 What, by the way, when are we going to vote on Saran or Dental Rap? Dental, the Dental Dam? Dental Dam. Dental Rap. Oh! Um, <laughs> when are we going to vote on Dental Dam? In porn? Yeah. No, you got to wrap it up. You got to wrap uh, it up with porn. Why don't porn. you just put a picture of my mother next to the bed? Would you make me use a Dental Dam? Are you sitting me? I can't get a hard on with a Dental Dam. Anyway. Uh, Be we, safe. We've had, Be safe. We've had one, uh, I think, one genuine uh, star of adult films come in and co-host some shows and Nina Hartley mm -hmm. and you've done interviews with her uh, she's very outspoken on Twitter uh, to say no to, to 61 she there was an ad yesterday that maintained that I think it's was it 61 I might have the 61 60 that's the no, 61 is the health care thing 62 60. is the condom one yeah I thought 62. I think 60 is 61 is definitely one. the Bernie Sanders health care one right vote, yes 60, 60. Six. There's billboards. 60, right, right, right. 60 is the condom one. Six, uh, and she was suggesting that it would give viewers the right to sue porn stars who did, who they saw did not wear them. I mean, I don't know if that's true, but it was. But anyway, just that we have a uh, an occasional TYT host. She came on here uh, for a, when, what the flick did, Masters of Sex, which was really great to have yeah. her on. She's, you know, she's a she's great. very strong advocate for for free speech uh, in, in the country. And uh, her and Sika. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but anyway, she's a she's a she's crucial. Shading against the, the law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, but. And by the way, I, fall, I probably should admit this on Instagram. I follow several porn stars, all against it. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If freedom, if freedom isn't free. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so, freedom is not free. Okay. Anyway, I could go on and on. Um, but we have 18 ballot initiatives in California. Too many. That's too many. Like, it's insane. We have two different. Initiatives on plastic, plastic bags, two. grocery bags, two different yeah. ones. Two different ones. It's insane. It's the insane. first one you're supposed to vote no, and the second one you're supposed yeah. to vote yes. And, and they by do the way, on purpose one, to confuse you. Yes. One is funded by the Progressive Bag Alliance. <laughs> Which side is that on? The deceptive side. <laughs> yeah, it's not the one that's on the progressive side. I feel like side. I might have done that wrong. Although I had a very clear instructions. How long did it take you to vote? A while. Five minutes. Longer than Trump, as you're going to say. Five minutes. I voted fast. I, I was in fast there longer than twenty minutes. I just oh, what? that's because I studied last yeah, night. I studied. Like no, I studied, I studied right, but I still I had a, I had po photos of the info that like, but I still wanted to read the initial. Like I still oh, was yeah. like, you know what? Let me make sure I'm. I was terrified that I'm like, am I going to vote wrong? Have I got the death penalty ones mixed up? Yeah. You know, oh, Prop 59, the one money out of politics, the one I care. Well, I don't know about most because death penalty is so important, marijuana. Yada. But anyway, I. I missed it, like I thing, and I was like, "Wait, there was nothing in so there." I, I, I literally like dabbed wrong. I was like, "Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! no. <laughs> yes! 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 I want my dad politics." Yes. For that one. So I would vote. This is how long it took me to vote. By the time I got to fifty nine, I was like, Lee was my wife's voting right next to me, and and I'm like, I'm gonna vote no on this just to fuck Jack. Right, <laughs> and, and, and she was gone, and there was somebody else there. Oh! <laughs> and, and they're like, "Don't do that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So you did not look over constantly and check uh, your wife's uh, No, like, I did not. I did yeah. not. I did no. not. There was like, where did the. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I skipped the judges. I yeah. voted judges. I, did you vote for the? Did you know who they were? No, I, yeah, we got some. We, oh, we actually get, we got things. advice from a from a judge. Really? Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Well, that seems biased. So it seemed like I would always go with <laughs> the one that would seem less of a you know like a hard ass. But mm -hmm. they all seemed they were like oh gangs pro, pro yeah. prosecutor, violent crimes prosecutor. They're all prosecutors. So I no, there were some. There were some. Voted, there were um, some. Uh, there were some apparently good ones. But this is a. This was from a, a very, sort of, whatever, a progressive judge who, you know. Okay, I, I wish I would have known. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so yeah. Let me know, is this bad? For, so usually I try to go by which is the more Libby specialty to have, like a defense attorney. As yeah, a defense attorney. But sometimes they're both bad, and so I actually just voted to increase diversity. Racial and gender diversity. Oh, really? Okay. You are a lib. I, I thought and about maybe it they're bad. I'm sorry. What is that? So, yeah. so you just there, were, there were women. There was an, a, an Asian judge. There were Hispanic yeah, judges. You I voted go. for the Asian judge? I don't remember. <laughs> I think so. No, I was tempted to be. Hang him, Lee. <laughs> 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 My God, that's not right. I was tempted to vote for the Vietnamese judge because I was like, how many Vietnamese yeah, judges Vietnamese. do we have, right? If, if, but I was like, no, I don't know anything about the judges, so I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, okay. I was irresponsible. Yeah, and so I should have read up more, like Ben did. Anyway. Uh, okay, so uh, last two things before we get to the story. I have a vi by the way. <laughs> Twenty minutes in. By the way, I have a video out. It's the Progressive Guide to the California Ballot Initiative. Oh, really? And so I have a video out right now up at the Jimmy Dore Show. Uh, what I did was I went to Jane Kim. She's a she's endorsed by Bernie Sanders. So she broke down the pro propositions on her website. So I just yeah. went there. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. if you're uh, we keep you talking about California, to, you were supposed to vote for the uh, Vietnamese judge. She's oh, one, is that right? She's one of the judges. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, but I follow your living. If if you know, obviously, most of you don't live in California. Um, Wes Clark did a great uh, video on TYT politics about the most important ballot initiatives throughout the country. So go check that out on YouTube.com/slash TYT politics. Okay, we have a result in. I can't believe I haven't said it yet. A result. Hillary Clinton has won Guam. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. as, as Guam goes, uh, as so goes no electoral where, college uh, votes. Where, how does uh, how does uh, 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 do you know the expression for Guam? It's got one of the greatest sayings for any state or territory. What? No, I don't. Guam, where America's day begins. Oh, right. Yeah, right, That's right, right. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, America's day has begun with a Hillary Clinton victory. Uh, she won comfortably, seventy-two percent uh, for Hillary Clinton, and uh, Trump only got twenty-four percent. And then a socialist candidate got 4.22 percent, yeah. almost five percent. Yeah. It's uh, Emidio Solitisic. I believe abortion completely banned in Guam. Hmm, is wow. that right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you had just voted for the socialists, we could have changed that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, later, we will have, for members only, we'll be having a debate about whether you're pro Emidio or anti Emidio. <laughs> well, so. Ben, shouldn't you update the board? <laughs> That's the territory. Come on. Okay. I see you mess around with Guam. That happens to you. Okay. And finally, um, look, uh, we've got over forty thousand viewers on right now uh, at the same time. Hello. Which, in the to give you guys a sense of context, a, about a year ago, I had a conversation with a, a guy who runs a very large platform whose whole point is to do live streaming. Obviously, you'll see. I don't want to give away the person, the name, the platform, etc. Eric Look. Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Page. No. Okay. Uh, his name rhymes with Buckerberg. <laughs> anyway, so they they never had forty thousand concurrent viewers at any time for any show on their Damn. entire platform. Okay, so you guys are amazing. But can I see a hundred thousand? <laughs> Okay. The people it's you election night. You're crazy. It's election yeah. night. You gotta go tell everybody. Is that view I see? Is that view I see? <laughs> Let us whisper of a view. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So if we get to 100,000, we're gonna get, start giving away crazy stuff. We're giving away Edwin, our stage manager. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's great. You'll love him. <laughs> and um, so seriously, uh, if we get to 100,000, which I understand is difficult, but we're gonna give away 100 TYT caps. Okay, they're good. These hats. are not even in the store. If you go to shoptyt.com, you'll get a lot of things. This one yeah. are not. This is a special edition. They're not even in the store, but we'll give away. A By the way, of these. that hat has a special power that if you wear that and walk around whatever city you're in, people will fist bump you randomly. I'm they will. Even, I'm no, I'm joking. not kidding. Because not they're like, hey, joking. TYT, you watch TYT. Yeah. It happens to me all the time. You watch yeah. TYT? Oh, shit, you yeah. are TYT. It, do you, if you want to get through airport security faster, wear TYT. Gear. Oh, the TSA guys. Every TSA person watches Everyone. TYT. Everyone. Really? So weird. Yes. 
it's higher a, percentage recognized from I've, I've had a guy who, after feeling me up, said, I love the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> he should have said it during. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan. Did he, did he feel you with the back of his hands or the front? I get a lot of, uh, <laughs> the back. to be fair, uh, back. I get a lot of, what's with Jimmy? From the two white, <laughs> uh, from the, from the yeah. uh, but look, it's a this is a it's just a quality hat. It fits well on the head. It looks good. It's got a nice curve. It's got it a low. Success. It's got a low slope. It's a, it's one of the few products that that Jenk didn't design, and, <laughs> <laughs> and it looks uh, it looks good. And you, if you get this one, it's actually been uh, been worn by me. <laughs> <laughs> and we have exactly a hundred, so you might get this. Yeah. One. yeah. Um, okay. So. Uh, uh, Share, share away, man. Sharing is caring. Uh, let's do a share package here. Share on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, uh, share on YouTube, embed, uh, send the link, family, friends, Randy Gonzalez, send them to everybody. Let's get everybody here. We're super yeah. excited about the election. We're going to give you the results as soon as we have them, including Guam. And then finally, um, uh, shoptyt.com does not have the hats, but it does have this super cool poster, which mm. is also limited edition, we're doing right now, called Defend the Land. Uh, renewables, not pipelines. Uh, if you've got that, Jesus, let's see. There's only 50 posters signed by the artist absent, and uh, two posters are going to new members that sign up today. Oh, we're going we're to pick that randomly. Okay, tytnetwork.com slash join uh, to become a member. Portion of the proceeds go to uh, the camp that's there, okay? And, uh, and you could find out, we'll have a link uh, so you could find out how to uh, help the uh, water protectors and... Um, it's ten percent off today, and thirty dollars gets you free shipping. Okay, that's what we, I hear. We, just for fun, we actually have some actual election results. Yeah, from Indiana. From three states: Indiana, New that's Hampshire, true. and Kentucky, all with uh, less than one percent of precincts reporting. So they're a little meaningless. Here comes but, uh, Bernie. But um, uh, they're all bad news. <laughs> Let's oh. start with Kentucky because we don't care. Oh, Kentucky. Seventy-three twenty-five Trump. Okay, half Kentucky. Who cares? Second okay. one we don't no, care we about. Love you in Indiana. Don't care. 6928. Well, we care for the Senate. We care for the Senate. Well, 69, 6928. Uh, New Hampshire, again. Uh, this is important. This is an important one. Uh, less than 1%. It, I'm sorry. That one actually not less than 1%. That 1%. 1% of the precinct signatures. 5341, Donald Trump. Uh oh. <laughs> Disaster. Okay, the mood Disaster. has immediately changed. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, I told you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, it's just one percent. Don't panic it. yet. Don't panic yet. Don't panic yet. Let me see if I can get. I keep saying to myself. Oh, you know what, dude? It's <laughs> remove the panic. Oh, okay. Whatever. It's the leftover votes from Dixville Notch. Oh. oh. But didn't she win Dixville Notch? No, he, she she won won Trump won it thirty-two to twenty-five. So it's meaningless. Thirty-two oh. twenty-five. Dixville Notch. Go fuck yourself. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? That was going to be. I, I, I didn't yeah, think, they'd, I didn't think they'd, uh, they'd, uh, they'd close. Trump has ahead 13,000, uh, basically 13,000 to 4,000 in Indiana, which is, uh, and, and 10,000 to 4,000 in uh, Kentucky. Okay, as you know, limited, limited or super results. Yeah. And by, it, we kid around, but you know, I've talked about this on the show a million times. I love Kentucky, I've been there many times. Uh, and there's a lovely chocolate factory, a chocolate museum that I visited in Indiana. So uh, I love this country. Hmm. Just let's just get less the bread. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, Kentucky, uh, uh, for me, top four uh, Commonwealth. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. God. All right. Let's do the stories. All right. Let's do the first one. This one's really fun. I don't even remember what they're about now. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think they're about the election. Okay. Then let's talk about the election. Uh, nobody respects women more than Donald Trump. But even Donald Trump has limits, and the limit is the door to uh, where you vote. And so uh, he was spied spying on his wife's ballot uh, this morning. Let's take a look at video 10. Slow mo from JR. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, there's nothing I like more than JR Jackson's slow mo yeah, videos. Um, no, I, the uh, only thing I like more is the SpongeBob score pants. Can we take, can, do you mind if you re rack that video show one more time? Because I saw something interesting in it. Yeah, here's my take on sure. what I saw interesting, and then we'll take a look at it. Um, I think he l does the fake looking over at her, like I'm just looking at her, not a big deal, and then does the look down for a second and comes back up. Look, as a guy, I've done looks. I've done looks, okay? So you can tell he wanted to look at her paper, right? Yeah. But he was pretending to look at her before he dipped down. So here it is again. 
So that one, that one's fine. That's innocent, look, I think. It's so fast. I think that it's hard to, it's really, but first of all, I just one. think what's interesting is that in this incredibly competitive election, that the, in New York, party. there's something called a, the dance party. Yeah. It's competitive. Ah! <laughs> 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 it is. Shoulder, that's hilarious. Um, he might have just been looking to see if she's done. That's what it occurred to. Maybe. Yeah. Man, not buying it. There was a little dip of the eyes there. A little dip of the eyes. But again, as I suggested, and I tweeted earlier today to Ann Coulter, I'm sure she's going to respond to me soon. I think if only Trump's family gets to vote, he wins. He's elected president 4 2. <laughs> yeah. Tiffany and Melania. So since this is they go the other way. <laughs> yeah. Since this is an important topic, let's dive into it a little <laughs> bit more. And then we're going to give you some great, great tweets on it, okay? Um, so let's. What's the theory? There's there's a couple possible uh, things. Is he is she voting for me? Make make sure. Um, the other is he went in there unprepared because he goes into everything unprepared. Yeah. Remember, it's not just the presidential election. There's a lot of things yeah. you vote on in every state. And I watched the whole two minute video. And before he does the look over, he's like. Oh. Like, oh, so the ballot. Right. Right. Oh, ah. you, know, you think he no. knows the ballot? He doesn't know, and of course he didn't ask, right? Yeah. Yes. And by the way, he's screwed because if he's copying off of Melania, he's just getting Michelle Obama's results anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the tweets, too. That's right. Oh, was it really? Yeah, no. so you're thinking that's good. I like it. I like it. So, what do you think? Is he checking to make sure that uh, she's not voting for Hillary Clinton? Or uh, cheating off of her. I think he just doesn't know what to do. I think he again. I, my hunch is he's never been to a polling station in his life. He's never voted. Uh, he doesn't know how it works. He doesn't know how to make the little the tabs fit he's in the never hooks. He's voted. He doesn't no, vote. He doesn't of never course voted. he does. I vote. think it's separate. <laughs> I don't think it's a, either that, of those. I think I don't. I don't think it's like he really thinks she's not going to vote for him. I think that this is just a symptom of the fact that he watches her every step. I bet. I bet he is constantly worried that she's going to cheat on him for a far better looking average man. <laughs> like a, a far more virile anybody else in the country. And so he probably <laughs> watches her constantly. That's the problem. When you choose someone who's way out of your league, you're just plagued by fear and insecurity. And so he's checking in on her all the and, time. And it's mm. also the conservative projection. Since he's constantly cheating on her, as we found out through all those stories, he assumes, well, she must yeah. be doing likewise. I got to keep checking in on her. I got to keep checking in on her. You know, that is, they chance. say that is the. The hell you create when you are a liar is that you now can't trust anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, welcome to Donald Trump's world. So yeah. I like that we have a lot of different theories on it. <laughs> we <laughs> we couldn't settle it because everybody's got a different theory. Uh, but I think he was cheating. He's like, shit. What did she write? What did she write? I don't know what to write for these things. Is anybody gonna find these things out, or can I draw it? a cartoon here? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you and do? He probably you? doesn't even know are any if it's these, secret. Are any of these judges Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> Or Mexican. He doesn't oh, like those. Yeah, All right, so let's go to the tweets, which are funny. Okay, uh, this text is way too small for me to read, so if we could just bring it up. You're going to see this is graphic uh, 76, by the way. I know that we're hopping around. Uh, when you didn't open your textbook once the entire semester, but you know this test is the only thing that counts as <laughs> your final grade. Funny. Funny. Good for BuzzFeed. <laughs> wow, they get a lot of retweets. Okay, we can jump ahead. Wow, they do get a lot of retweets. Who am I supposed to vote for? Harambe. No, really. Smod? I don't know Smod. Whoever uh, did this tweet is more tuned into popular culture than me. Okay. <laughs> I think you're supposed to read them out loud, John. That's Yo, you want me to read all of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trump panicked and had to copy Melania's ballot. Now both are voting for Hillary. You see who tweeted <laughs> Sorry, that? That's from Daddy's Little Cycle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Uh, Melania didn't even vote. Trump. She just yeah. scrolled, help me. Ah! <laughs> Come on, that's great. That's ah, great. That's that's pour me coffee. Nice job for the win. See, the problem with real Donald Trump copying Melania's ballot is that Melania copied uh, from there Michelle Obama. Yeah, there you go. There Good you job. Go. Oh, he got way more retweets than I would have. Uh, well, she's an immigrant. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's just doing the hard work of poll watching. Okay. Ha! Uh. Remember, election laws require us to respect the privacy of others. Yeah, you totally, they're married, so it doesn't matter, but you totally can't look. You can't look. No, but it does matter. So that, yeah. that one was serious. Hold on, stay on this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I thought this was photoshopped at first, but apparently it's authentic. The son did it too. No way! Yeah, that's uh, that's Eric, right? That's yeah. Eric Trump. Yeah. And I, you know why? Because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. No kidding. He also doesn't know what's on the ballot. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're all Trumps. They never prepare. So they're like, I don't know. Daddy gave me all the money. What the hell did I have to prepare for? I came out of the womb and I had a two hundred million dollars, right? Yeah. So Congress? What's Congress? He's like, well, hey, what, you, yeah. what is what's this? What is this? Right. I, 
I see dad's name, but then what are all these other names? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, they 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 expect that they'll just be handed like a white supremacist bout, and they turn that in like Twitter, where they can just retweet bullshit all day long. No, you have to actually come up with something for yourself on election day. Now, technically, I know nobody cares about this, but technically, it is breaking the law to look at anyone else's vote. Yeah. Okay. So uh, voter fraud. lock him up. It's voter fraud. Lock, lock him up. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if Hillary Clinton arrests him for this after she wins? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, wait, Whoa. what was that chant again? <laughs> hey, hey, you, I have these uh, fantasies of, uh, you know, a, a, a non-politicized uh, FBI uh, uh, finding out that, like, Donald Trump's ties to Russia or even Trump University, that somehow something actually criminal happened. And after all this locking up, that actually Donald Trump were arrested sometime in November of next yeah. year. By the way, there's he's his strategy is okay. not that dumb in this case. He actually has a number of legal violations yes. that are real, uh, like yeah, whether pending. it's the abuse of the charity, which is super real, abuse of campaign finance laws where he was accepting donor money, and the list goes on and on. But since he did all the locker up stuff, it'll seem like it was retribution if she locks him up. The he only apparently guy who violated might, the embargo in Cuba. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes on and on, right? The only guy who might he have the balls it. to do it is <laughs> Schneiderman in New York. You might be like, yes. Yeah, you yeah. want to call it political, call it whatever you like. This guy broke the law, I'm coming for. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know, we'll see. So, your fantasy might not be that far off. Okay, uh, I have an update before we move on to the next story. We've already broken 50,000. Yay! Oh, damn! Oh, no. Can I see a hundred thousand? A hundred of these caps coming out to rent. If you share, by the way, what we're going to do afterwards on how how we decide who's getting the caps is whoever shared. We're going to go through Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and look at who shared because yeah. we can do that. We have technology here, okay? Yeah. And then uh, among the people who shared, we're going to give you a hundred caps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And be be a power sharer. Share the stream directly, not just with your own followers, but directly at Libby celebrities, so that they can share. Hmm, There's a lot of lib celebrities like Young Turks. Yeah, that's true. Remind them we're streaming. All right, hit, hit the lib celebrities. All right, um, and and you know what? If if uh, I'll encourage people to do this while you're watching the Young Turks today. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can carry us with you if you're going somewhere. You can watch us on your phone. Oh All right, God. what's next, John? Uh, next is actually the uh, GOP insiders that I think you're going to present. Oh yes, I'm going to present yes. that. Here, okay. you can take this if you want. All right, that sounds good. This is okay. a looser show than normal. Okay, yes, we uh, prepared this in a hurry. All right, get off my ass. Okay, um, <laughs> Donald Trump over here. Okay, all right, Eric Trump looking in on my ballots. Okay, this story is about uh, GOP insiders who now realize Trump's an idiot. <laughs> I love this story. They're like, wait a minute, it turns out he didn't do any preparations for getting out the vote. Yeah. And that's what we told you. Okay, I mean, how are you surprised by this? He said after Iowa, the, the, that's the first caucus, it's so important, it's so important. He said on TV with no sense of shame that he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Like, I don't know what get out the vote was. Uh, what's get out the vote? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's in the title. You get out the vote so they can't go out and vote for you, right? He doesn't know one thing about this. He didn't bother preparing, even though he's running for the most important office in the country. So we told you all along his incompetence is what's going to do him in. And it turns out now the Republican Party is like, what the hell? The guy's incompetent. He didn't even prepare anything for it to drive his voters out to the polls. So here is a quote uh, from the examiner. The improvements, uh, and it's a Republican strategist that they're uh, quoting. The improvements the RNC made are good ones, uh, he said. But I don't think anyone there thought that the entire ground operation would be dumped on them and dumped on them pretty late in the election. This will be Trump's legacy. He thought he could rewrite the basics of a campaign. Yeah. No, but see, there's one thing wrong in that quote, though. No, this isn't some sort of like alternate strategy that Trump is using, <laughs> like some sort of third dimensional chess with a Jedi mind trick thrown in. No, he just didn't bother doing it. Because that's his whole life. Third dimensional his mess. daddy gave him hundreds of millions of dollars, and he's been oh, fumbling it ever since. Why do you think he went bankrupt six times? Yeah. Why do you think he built three casinos in Atlantic City at the same time, even though everyone said, hey, knucklehead, you're going to cannibalize your other casinos? And all of them went bankrupt because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing and he never prepares. There wasn't a strategy. He's just like, ah, man. Getting out the vote in a ground game, I don't know what that is. I don't want to, anybody want to figure that out? I don't want to figure it out. Yeah. And one other thing that's really important. 
his ego blocks him from asking questions. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know what a ground game is. He can't ask because he's the he's Mr. Trump and he knows everything. So if he says, "Hey guys, what's a ground game?" He looks like an idiot, right? Yeah. So he doesn't. He ask. also he surrounds himself with advisors who are chosen primarily uh, because they agree with him. They don't question him, and not because they have particular expertise. That's right. He They're like, "Oh yes, yes Donald. Yes, Donald. You don't need a ground game. Your ground games yeah. for losers." I mean, Corey Lewandowski. <laughs> Corey Lewandowski. I mean, that guy again. He's the, you know, he's a he's a, he's the kid from the wrong fraternity in Animal House. You know. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and. And he hires him, and he becomes a top advisor. Still is uh, a, clearly a top advisor. And, he'll, and and Corey Lewandowski had the audacity this week to tweet that Katie Turr got a book deal, and he said that uh, oh, Katie Turr just used her job to get a book deal. Oh, you used your job to, to, get, to, get, to get a, a CNN, CNN deal. deal. I mean, yeah. it's the most yeah. And I, I you know, and, and I just thought no, she did her job and got a book deal. Like you know, that's yeah. that's a significant difference. Yeah. No. But uh, yeah, of course he doesn't. He didn't even. I mean, but you're, to not see the irony in that you used your job to get a job on CNN, but it just, yeah. just doesn't, it doesn't occur to these guys. Now I, I have done a little bit of research, and apparently the RNC's get out the vote effort has been strong, like sure, stronger course, than they, in the past. I saw it. stats. I'm probably gonna get them all wrong because uh, I don't check anything. Uh, but in New Hampshire, they announced that they had knocked on uh, two million doors, and apparently there are only about six hundred thousand doors <laughs> in New Hampshire, which that which actually supposedly means that they've knocked on every door multiple times. So I apologize to the people in New Hampshire. It must be hell for you. They, these people are going to your here's your place. a here's no, a. No, they would actually go inside the house and knock on bathroom doors, exactly. living room doors, bedroom doors. Yeah, just right. knock on any door. Yeah, yeah. so that'll uh, help mitigate the, to Jimmy some extent. door. They knocked on <laughs> um, the uh, a morning consult Politico uh, exit poll uh, today found that uh, sixty two percent of Americans uh, said they were not contacted by either campaign. Hmm. But 17% said they were contacted by the Clinton campaign. 8% said they were contacted mm. by the Trump campaign. That's a big eight. gap. 17 and 8. So, so more that's than twice. More than, yeah. more than double. Yeah. So, and, and there you have it. That's which, by the way, is heavily focused on just a few states, Sorry, which and means a bigger percentage in each. 9% by state. both. So, so it's 26 for Clinton, 17 for Trump. Still a significant yeah. advantage. Yeah. So, uh, so about 150% uh, rather than 200%. Um, so... Uh, and by the way, this is from the Washington Examiner, and, and David Drucker, the writer, the Washington Examiner is more of a conservative publication. So this is not a bunch of liberals just you know, saying, ha ha, Trump. No, this is conservatives waking up and smelling the coffee and go, oh right, our candidate was a moron who, di who didn't work hard enough uh, to get this thing done. Because they want him to win, right? Yeah. Uh, but, and they thought, oh, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. No, there's no Mr. Trump. And, and so the reality is now conservatives acknowledging what we've been saying all along, oops. Yes, while the RNC did work hard, see, we don't like the RNC either. We got no love for them, but they at least do, do their jobs and they worked hard. But the Trump team totally dropped the ball, and and I and I like the part where they say like, and it got dumped on them late. Like they thought yeah. Trump must be doing something behind the scenes that we're not seeing. He's spending so much money, right? No, he wasn't doing anything behind the scenes because he's a knucklehead and a loser. Yeah, yeah, he tried to get a peek at Hillary Clinton's ground game, but she put her arm in front of it so you can yeah, see. Yeah, it was. Uh, what's, yeah. A, what's a ground game? Uh, moving on. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, uh, if Trump does actually lose tonight, uh, what will he take from this experience? Will he have enjoyed the chance to get to know the American people better and to make a positive change for conservatism in America? Uh, he doesn't appear to think so, according to his most recent appearance on Fox and Friends, which you're going to see uh, in video uh, 11. You said uh, many times, if I don't win, this is a total waste of time. Here we are, election day. We don't know who's going to win. Is that still how you feel? Not, even your friend Bill O'Reilly said it's the greatest political phenomena in his lifetime. There's never been a movement. So they said, no, no, even if you don't win, I said, let me tell you, if I don't win, I will consider it a tremendous waste of time, energy, and money. I'm going to be, sure. I, I will have spent over $100 million of my own campaign. But no, I will consider it, uh, I will not consider it great if I don't win. I, nobody well, wants to lose. First of all, he didn't spend $100 million. He's lying about that. But that's a weird way to put it. That it would have just been a big waste. It, that's basically giving the finger to the people who've supported you. Yeah. It's the wrong thing to say, for sure. It's just the wrong <laughs> thing. You can feel it. Yeah. Think it. And besides which, 
think about it. What you're supposed to say is even if we lose, the fight goes on. Not about because it's not about me. Right. Yeah. It's about this movement. That's what, exactly what Bernie Sanders said because he meant it. Right. He's like, look, if it was about Bernie Sanders, he would have given up 40 years ago, right? I mean, it's been wall-to-wall -wall losses for progressives for so long, but he kept on fighting because it's about the movement. It's about ideas that he passionately cares about. For Trump, there are no ideas he passionately cares about. There's hardly any idea up there. If you look inside Trump's brain, it has just one giant sign that says, glows Trump, Trump, Trump. So once the race is over, he's like, what do I care about any of you and the movement or ideology? I don't I flip flop on my opinions all the time. I don't have yeah. an ideology. Right. There is no movement. The movement's about me. If I lose, it's yeah. over. And and to to go back to the the sort of the bungler thing, like his inability to, to even when he has an opportunity to use it well, as you said when he opened the third casino and uh, caused them all to fail, uh, we we strongly believe that he's going to try to set up some sort of media empire or something like that. Well, this undercuts that. You want to smoothly transition your massive amount of supporters, which he does have, over into watching your shows. But instead, ah, it's just a big waste. It was a waste of time and energy. Who cares? A waste so, of my time. So let, let me, because I, I saw something this morning. I read the transcript of that whole interview this morning, and it was fascinating because the questions were breathtakingly dumb. Like, it so, is Fox and Friends. Yeah, it is Fox and Friends. But So I was trying to find it again so I could read some of it to you. But Eric Wemple the Washington Post has actually pointed it out about how dumb these interviews with Fox and Friends were. He says, whatever the case, now it's time to slow down and appreciate several of the questions that came Trump's way Tuesday morning. In the last campaign, 2000, in the last campaign, 2016, mind meld between Trump and Fox and Friends. Enjoy. What is going through your mind right now? Out of everything you've accomplished, you've been through in your life, you've been front and center really for 40 years. Tell me about this day for Donald Trump. It's a good one. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, zinger. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of weeks ago, it was revealed that part of Hillary Clinton's game plan was that to talk up the polls and make it seem like, you know, show's over, no way you can win. Then, of course, the polls, for the most part, right now, are too close to call. No, no, not exactly. Not. Uh, ultimately, though, do you think the polls that we've seen over the last week or two, because the pollsters aren't factoring in how many Democrats are going to be voting for you, and also just the gigantic number of Republicans who have turned out to see you, the enthusiasm level, do you think these things pollsters are getting wrong? I mean, again, they're just there's wild there. misrepresentation of things that are happening. I'm not yeah. saying you have to call it over in any way for Wait, Hillary Clinton. And, and just the, the basic premise that, that Hillary Clinton two weeks ago was talking up the polls to say that it's over, it says nothing to do with Hillary Clinton. No campaign says, oh, we got this in the bag, nobody needs to worry, because then your supporters don't turn out. That's such a stupid approach to politics, that they believe people, that they, that they even think it's possible that a politician would have that. Shows that they don't understand how campaigns work. Well, it's, it is nice to see that the friend, people at Fox and Friends and Friends and Friends have learned their lesson from the 2012 polling debacle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me, let me hit you with true, two more. One of them's really quick. You know, a lot of people love you because you're not the establishment and you're not the mainstream media. That was a question. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, right. right? And then we appreciate you're always inter you always interviewing with us. We've always asked Hillary Clinton to do the same thing. Every time we ask you, we ask her. We appreciate you being with us in the morning. So many of your voters are watching and watch Fox. Back in June of 2015, about a year and a half ago, that's when you made the announcement right over here about a block away. You walked down this escalator in Trump Tower with your wife. When you see that video, so much has changed. You've experienced a lot of ups and downs. What do you think about I mean, it's, 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 it's rambling. again, it's like a question written by Trump's doctor. Yeah. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's Since you're so mess. fantastic, <laughs> right. how do you answer for your fantasticness? Like, you've been fantastic. Thanks for interviewing with us. You got to read your announcement right over here. You walked out an escalator. Your wife, she's super pretty. So? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Anyway, uh, one last thing about this. Um, Arsenio Hall. So, um, <laughs> let me explain. Uh, when uh, about a month ago or so, uh, the New York Times got the, the audio tape of a five hour interview that a biographer of Donald Trump had done just two years ago. And, um, and it, it, you can tell in the tapes, and he wrote a whole book about it, like the number one insecurity Donald Trump has is uh, being called a loser. So now, I celebrated that unsurprisingly because I was like, I told you, that's his main, you know, Achilles heel. I mean, he's got an Achilles body, okay? He's got a lot of flaws. But his main thing is like, oh, I don't want to be a loser because secretly I know I am, right? And so the biographer says, anytime I ask him, mean, you hear it in the tapes, like uh, about anything related to winning and losing, like, oh, losers, no, nah, they're, they're the worst. They're, nobody likes them. Nobody, nobody will even cover them. And he brought up Arsenio Hall out of nowhere. And the, and the biographer is like, 
Arsenio Hall was very successful, had a hit TV show, was a pop culture phenomenon, came back, did other things. No, loser, can't get a uh, phone call return, can't make it on TV. He can't, nobody wants him anymore. Nobody wants him anymore. You don't want that, you don't want that, right? And so that's what drives him. So, so that's why he gives that answer on Fox and Friends. Because he thinks, if I lose, oh no, nobody will call me anymore. I won't be able to get a TV job. I'll lose the spotlight, the thing, precious, you know, uh, and that's the thing that he craves the most. That's why he thinks, oh God, oh God, what if I lose? Which, which is why also, I mean, I sort of 5% admire it because I think it's him being honest. Like he's mm -hmm. actually revealing something about himself, whether it's but intentional or not. Accidentally. Because what he should say to protect his need to be covered is, well, look, I've been saying uh, that the system's rigged, the election's rigged, the media's rigged it, and so if I lose, we're going to look at it and uh, maybe it was stolen from me. Because then you're not a loser. That's why he's been advancing that in advance, is that then you were robbed. You didn't lose. And so for the next five years, he can go on TV saying, I had the election stolen from me and my supporters, and you can now watch us every day on Trump TV. But he, sometimes he is not savvy enough to do that. He, yeah. He, he set up that yeah. excuse, and so he should deliver it on a day like today, yeah. uh, especially as the polls seem to be leaning against him. Uh, but instead, he can't help himself. And in fact, that was the ending of the New York Times article about that five-hour interview. Uh, they the biographer asked them, why don't you ever do introspection? Like, we've been talking a long time. It seems like you never looked inwards and tried to figure out. And he's like, he literally said, it's because I'm afraid what I might find out about myself. Wow. Oh what? My, isn't that amazing? That is amazing. amazing. Okay. This is therapy for him. <laughs> I know. So, and that's what you got here in, in this interview, which is, God, if I lose, then it was all a waste. Mm. It turns out after all this time, I am a loser. Hmm. He better lose. Okay. All right. Uh, we got five minutes left. What's the next story? Yes. Uh, next was the uh, the Muslim American soldier. Oh, I, I love this. Can presented. you hand okay. it to me? Yes. Okay. Uh, here is the story, and here is the graphic. Okay. Obviously, we put this together in a hurry today, but I love this, love this, so I want to share it with you as quickly as we can. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Washington Post with a heartwarming story today. Uh, earlier, as we were doing the live coverage of the selection all day long, uh, I talked about how I was going to explain the the Judeo-Muslim heritage in America mm. and Judeo-Muslim uh, values. And, and I did not know about this gentleman. I read the story later in the day, okay? And it turns out it's exactly what I was talking about. So uh, in the Judeo-Muslim values that I'm referring to are when we stick together against uh, religious intolerance. And that's what was brought out by Trump. So the silver lining in his uh, ignorance and his hatred and all the things that he did was it brought a lot of people together. For example, Bernie Sanders got a larger Muslim uh, vote than any candidate uh, in, in, in history, I believe, if, if I've got that right from the primaries. That's my recollection of it. And he's Jewish, of course, right? And um, the Anti-Defamation League was among the first organizations to come out and said, no, you should not discriminate against Muslims like that. It is wrong to do religious intolerance. Mm -hmm. So when Trump talked about I'm banning all Muslims, etc., the ADL was the first uh, folks out there saying, don't do it. That's a terrible idea. Discrimination is always a bad idea. So now a heartwarming story uh, that, uh, that fits in perfectly with that. An Orthodox Jewish immigrant uh, from Hungary uh, said that he was, his name is Yosef Rappaport. He said he was dedicating his vote to Army Captain Humayun Khan a Muslim American soldier whose family Donald Trump had attacked during uh, the campaign. And he said, look, he was fighting for all the things that we care about, America, freedom, religious liberty, and Trump was attacking that. And he's like, you know how that story ends? That story ends with us, right? And so that's what we've been saying all along. And he, I just want to give you a couple of his quotes because I think they're so fa fantastic. He said about um, tr Trump going after Muslims, he said, that should be frightening to every religious person. When there's an attack on one religious group, it means my religious liberty is diminished. And then he went on to say, the attack on Muslim minorities causes great concern for me because we are in the same country. We are protected by the same rules. So there is an American who understands what uh, this country is all about. There's a reason why we protect religious liberty. One, because we're decent human beings and we should protect one another. Okay. Two, because it might be us next. And yeah. so 
Uh, and if you think he's alone in the Jewish community, because if you turn on TV, sometimes the right wingers make it seem like, oh, if you're pro-Israel, you're right wing, you're Republican, the Democrats, oh, no way, they don't. Are you in? No way, it's not remotely true. Jewish Americans are among the most solidly democratic voting uh, groups yeah. in America and in American history. Right at this point, after African Americans, it's, it's uh, Jewish Americans. Do you know that in 2016, according to the polling done in October and all, all the way up to November 5th, right now among Jewish Americans, 75% are voting for Clinton, according to the polling. 75%, only 17% for Trump. So when you hear right wingers on TV pretending that the pro Jewish position is some sort of right wing position on more war or neoconservative positions or uh, supporting hard right wing Israeli positions like Netanyahu's, don't believe the hype. Now they might have different views on internal Israeli politics, yeah. but as far as American politics is concerned, uh, Jewish Americans say, no, yeah, we're, we're in this case Hillary Clinton. Overall, the Democratic Party have been solidly so. Now, Orthodox Jews uh, do tend to vote a little bit more uh, towards Republicans, but they're only 10% of Jews. But this guy is Orthodox. Yeah. And he said, no, not on our watch. And he added one last thing. Just the, yesterday, Ann Coulter talked about hey, if the if oh, four grandparents rule, four grandparents. if only the people who had four grandparents born in this country fuck. could vote, then, uh, then Trump would win in a 50 state <laughs> landslide. First of all, it turns out not all of Trump's grandparents were born here. Uh, oops. oops. <laughs> okay. Um, but Yosef Rappaport said that's literally the rule that they yeah. had in Hungary. And since a couple of my grandparents were not born in Hungary, we were so afraid they were going to ship us off to Poland where they had the concentration camps. Yeah. So we stick together because. This country was built on religious liberty, and we can't lose that. Um, That's real values. Uh, because he's r real quick uh -huh. running for the Senate in Massachusetts. Kurt Schilling. This just remi your story reminded me of uh, of Schilling on Jake Tapper, asking. He says to Tapper, "I don't understand." And this is maybe this is the amateur non-politician in me. I don't understand how people of Jewish faith can back the Democratic Party, which over the last 50 years has been so clearly anti-Israel, so clearly anti-Jewish. Uh, I don't know what else would need to be done, said, or happened for people to understand that they don't. The Democratic Party is alive for Israel only because we have agreements in place to make them have to be. By the way, that was partly done. So that's yeah. exactly the ignorance we're talking about. Yeah. But that was partly done so that Kurt Schilling can tell everybody, hey, Jake Tapper's a Jew. It was that was so fucking dirty. I didn't even know he was Jewish. Okay, he said, "Hey, you're Jewish, right? Right?" And I'm like, "Jesus Christ!" Now oh, we're doing this on TV. One last thing, and so I, I think, like I personally think, we we, we identify. Gotta go. We gotta go. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Okay, we gotta take a quick break here, but we'll be right back. We still have six hours of coverage, so uh, come right back in two minutes. Polls are closing. Yeah, we got news. Come right back. I'm Jimmy McMillan. I represent the renters' too damn high party. I found this party over 10 years ago because people were playing a silly game. But today is a big day, a big day for our movement. I'm here today to address the issue. People can't afford to travel anywhere. They can't afford to go any place on the weekend. They're stuck at home. Why? Because the car rent is too damn high. Car rent? Yes. Car rental fee. Jimmy, you're changing this whole thing. It I'm wasn't not, about I'm car not, rent. I'm not changing anything. You're just not no, listening. Jimmy, get out of here. Are you listening? Hit it. Rent is too damn high. My mustache haircut is too damn fly. I'm on a mission again to give the people my word. Car rental around here is too damn absurd. Stop it. Stop it. Now, Jimmy, this is crazy. This is supposed to be a political party. Did you sell out? That's what you think. Yeah. We need six cents. Change the game. To rent a car place to keep us sane. Yeah. S I X T now on the scene. With car rental prices out of the scene. Cause rent is too damn high. I say the rent is too damn high. I'm Jimmy McMillan. Sick. Come and ride with me. The rent is too damn high. 
I said the rent is too damn high. The rent is too damn high. I said the rent. Any more questions? Not so fast. Can we eat in here? Damn it, they failed us! And if you're not angry about that, Michael, and any of you out there, then you're damn wrong! Because you should be angry! Young Turks! But it was genuine. Well, he was mad. Jake Uger, known online as one of the Young Turks, isn't afraid to throw some punches. Three, two, one, fade up! I just remember thinking, what is this guy's name? Jake the Turk Yuga. What kind of TV station is this? The whole point is for me to yell and scream and tell you what I think. It was right out of like Wayne's World. This guy on this little rinky dink website is speaking truth to power. We've been averaging 600,000 views a day, beating most of the cable shows in America. We're the largest online news show in the world. We're celebrating our one billionth view. Television! We're coming. More politics ahead with Cenk Uger. He knew that the MSNBC opportunity was an experiment. And Phil and host beat CNN and Headline News combined. At some point, they want to give me a show. Every single year, that comes out of our paycheck. We put it in, and you're saying we were suckers. When you, as a host, tells someone you're interviewing to shut up, that's going to raise a red flag. That guy needed a tall glass of shut up juice. If President Obama's doing the wrong thing, I'm not going to tell you that he's doing the right thing so I can, quote, support him. He says to me, you won't believe the meeting that I just had. The head of MSNBC talked to me. And they want him off the air. Jack took an incredible risk. When we're supposed to challenge the government, that's the role of the media. The Democrats and the Republicans are, are here to screw you. I, and who on the air is saying it? I wouldn't have done what he did. That if I'm going to be a talk show host, I should be the biggest talk show host in the country. I don't think anyone else does it better. I don't think anyone's even close. Before you know it, I'll be back on your TV doing a national show. I guarantee it. Hey, Jacory. Yeah? Want to be internet stars? Mm, not really. Want to play Imagination? Fuck yeah. Sweet. Who do you want to be? Anna Kasparian. Again, I, I should really connect with the character. You know, I have an insatiable hunger for information and truth. I care about the way politics run in our country. Now you buck the heels. Mind taking a picture for the foot blocks? That makes me jank then. Camera's rolling. Sound speeds. Coming in at five, four, three. <laughs> All right, back at the Young Turks election night coverage. Are you kidding me? We're halfway through. I feel like we just started. Uh, polls are closed. Polls are closed. Panic time. Okay. All right. First, I got to tell you how you can watch, and then I'm going to tell you about the polls that have closed. And then we have a shooting. Okay, at a polling station. So lots of dramatic near, news. Near a poll station. Near a poll station. Okay. Members, you can check out the simultaneous coverage happening just for you guys. We've got this stream, and then we've got a second stream. 
Uh, and of course, to join is tytnetwork.com slash join. Uh, but then once you're there, tytnetwork.com slash members live. Okay, that's how you watch the second stream. You could double stream here, just don't cross them. Uh, you can check out the schedule for uh, this. And I believe for the members only stream as well at tytnetwork.com slash members schedule. Yes, that's got the annoying two S's in the middle, members schedule, okay? And it includes uh, member interaction with Dave Kohler, Gigi Manukian, quizzes with party guests about the primary. We just had Brian Ungertaker, Ida Rodriguez there. They did a great segment. There's a poster giveaway about Dapple. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not a member, remember tytnetwork.com slash join. Okay, here are your poll closings. I'll show you the poster you could win in a second, which is great. Uh, Georgia just closed. Sorry, Georgia's done. It's done. <laughs> oh my God, who's going to win Georgia? Trump. Indiana, Indiana. It's closed. It's closed. It's done. It's done. I'm sorry, it's done. They're, they're kicking you out. They're kicking you out of the polling stations. Indiana's closed. Uh, who's going to win it? Trump. But these are not called yet, by the way. I'll tell you when it's officially called. Uh, but we do have a, a, a Senate race there where Evan Bias bungled it away. And he, and he will uh, likely lose, but it's not 100% safe. Kentucky, closed. They're kicking you out. They're kicking you out. Please clap. Uh, and <laughs> Please clap. Tr Trump. Uh, oh, my God. Trump's got such a huge lead. He's going to win the first three states. Oh, my God. South Carolina, closed. First four states go to Trump. Jesus, Lord mercy. They're not called yet. They're not called yet. Just calm down. Okay, I'm telling you to calm down as I'm screaming. Here we go. The great state of Vermont is just closed. We're going to bring uh, we're gonna bring Vermont home. That's what we're going to do. We're going to bring it home. Uh, and Virginia. Okay, now all kidding aside, the one state that is super relevant and we will keep you updated on uh, throughout uh, this hour is Virginia. So the rest are solidly red or in the case of Vermont, solidly blue. Virginia is one of the critical swing states. I don't have it in my top six because I thought Hillary Clinton's lead was sizable enough in Virginia that she was going to win it, uh, but she must. If she loses Virginia, oh boy. You'll notice uh, Virginia. You go to the board. Go to the board. You'll notice uh, Virginia's uh, placement uh, on this uh, map. Move. First of all, can we widen out the shot slightly, uh, uh, or I'll hold it up? But that's a little awkward. Uh, Virginia, you'll notice there in the black in the middle. We're officially calling it a swing state, but we're being generous with our swing state turns because we want dramatic moments. Okay, we're being uh, honest about it. We're uh, being honest. But obviously, a Trump Trump win in Virginia uh, devastating. Catastrophic. <laughs> Catastrophic. Uh, as would a Trump win in Pennsylvania. We'll uh, check to see if any of those states have been called. We'll have that information for you as soon as we can. Yes. So the minute we have information from any of the news sources, we will scream. Okay. So it'll be subtle. The way we'll tell you is, oh my God, results are in in Virginia. Okay. So uh, that's it. now in 7 30, uh, we've got poll closing times in North Carolina, Ohio, and West Virginia. North Carolina, Ohio, also swing states. Trump likely to win Ohio, but it's certainly not certain. Certainly not certain is a great term. And then, um, and then, <coughs> North Carolina is actually in more dispute than Ohio is. So if Hillary Clinton wins North Carolina, it's over. It's over. Pack up. I mean, keep watching for the next six hours. <laughs> okay. we, have, uh, <laughs> we have three states so called. They're called. We have calls. Go. Uh, the uh, state of Indiana called. Called. Eleven electoral votes. Donald Trump. Do he's, he's winning eleven nothing. We're done uh, for. Uh, Trump from the outside scores from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. He's got a 19 to nothing lead. Well, you said oh! Commonwealth, and you said from the outside for a second. I panicked that it was the, Virginia. Total, uh, or, or Pennsylvania. <laughs> I know, but I, Pennsylvania hasn't yeah. closed it. Uh, so uh, 19 nothing, but the comeback has already begun. Oh, my God. A three-pointer from Burlington, Vermont, buried for Hillary Clinton. She's on the board. It's 19 to 3. Uh, the home of Bernie Sanders. Does Bernie deliver? Always. Always. But right now, guys, it is panic time. We're losing 19-3. 19-3, Trump takes the early lead. But is that Clinton from behind? <laughs> Here comes Hillary Clinton! I will say for the rest of the night until she takes the lead momentarily. <laughs> she, won't, she won't at the 7 o'clock hour. No. In the 7 o'clock hour, uh, you can add Virginia to that list, we hope. Uh, but he will have the lead going into 7.30. He'll maintain the lead through 7.30. 8 o'clock is when uh, we start yelling, here comes Hillary. Although the first state on the board there is Alabama. I have an unusual request that I haven't, nor I don't think, ever made on the air. I think I left my blue magic marker uh, outside on the 
on the main bar. If somebody could grab okay. my blue magic marker, that would be great. Yes, <laughs> okay, we, we're, we, we will effort that immediately. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the red-blue map originally made its uh, appearance in 1976 on ABC, and it was actually switched. They had the blue was for the Republicans. Is that right? And red was for the Democrats, and they based it off the, uh, the Tories and the Labor Party in uh, England. Hmm. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure all this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy laying down a lot of history lately. You know, mm. after the post game yesterday, which a lot of people, uh, uh, a lot of the members really loved, which was great. So that was mm -hmm. me, Ben, and Jimmy uh, arguing a little bit. Um, but uh, I went back and checked out uh, your Malcolm X clip on the Jimmy Dore show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and that was great. It was great about the fox and the wolf that you talked about in the second hour of today as well. So, yeah, no, Malcolm X, uh, kind of a bright guy. But, you know, there was an irony built into that, and then we'll get to the shooting, uh, is that he talked about how, uh, you know, Lyndon Johnson is the fox, and they present you Barry Goldwater, who's the wolf, to mm -hmm. scare you into voting for the fox, right? But, you know, he, him and Martin Luther King, they also played that game. Okay, now, mm -hmm. it was for the right reasons, mm -hmm. and it was not a fox as in a bad thing, right? But... Malcolm X was the wolf, so you went, oh, Martin Luther King, I'll take Martin Luther King. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Do you see what I'm saying? And yes. so uh, Malcolm X was. So you take the nice or nonviolent black guy or the violent, scary black guy? Yeah, so Malcolm X was even smarter than people realize because he was completely familiar with that concept and he was actually playing three dimensional chess. Was he really doing that? Like, we know he was playing no, that game? Look, that, that's my reading of it. Uh -huh. I've I read his autobiography. I've read a lot about Malcolm X. I'm not a scholar on it, obviously. It's mm -hmm. not, I'm not like John Iderola, who almost got a PhD. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm still working on it, Jimmy. He's working on uh, it. Yeah, and, and so, you guys but, are the worst. <laughs> I love the attacks on people in the company who aren't on the panel to defend oh, themselves. Oh, sorry, Johnny Ty. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we were too nice to him earlier. We got to make up for it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so that's an interesting strategy and one yeah. Malcolm X uh, deployed as he was talking about it. So fascinating mm. stuff. Okay. All right. The shooting. All right. So we have uh, a lot of election-related news, um, but. Something pretty terrible happened near a polling place in Azusa, California. There are early reports of an active shooter in Azusa, California. Now, as we report on this story, unfortunately, there are very few details as to whether or not police have this person in custody, but they did describe him as a bald, heavy white male who was heavily armed. Uh, multiple people were shot and injured. We know that one person is dead, but it's uncertain as to whether or not uh, the person who was killed was the shooter or if it was a victim. Um, now, this happened near a polling station. There were two polling places in the area, actually. Uh, the Memorial Park North Recreation Center and Dalton Elementary School. Uh, both of those places uh, were impacted by the shooting. People were forced to stay indoors and they were locked down. Also, Slauson Middle School, which was near the location of the police activity, was also placed on lockdown. We have this, you know, image, actually we have a video of these kids, they're in school, they're sitting on the ground. I mean, it's a scary situation. Let's take a quick look at that.